We have about a hundred people watching right now, so don't mess up. <laughs> Sounds they're, good. They're staring at your gifts, by the way. <laughs> okay, you're good. Good so, to go. Don't mess up. All right. So, um, they're, they're staring at your welcome gifts, everybody by the way. to our IS session CTF uh, How to okay, CTF night. Uh, this go. is don't one of my favorite up. nights of the year. Right, so uh, I've only done it once before, everybody, to obviously our have a CTF IS last year. Hopefully, nothing will happen to prevent a CTF from happening this year. Um, this meeting is really just meant to like prepare you, to get you comfortable, to give you information about IS Session CTF, uh, what we're trying to do. Um, a lot of the information that I'm going to go to through today, uh, you've you've seen before in announcements, but uh, it's a good to get, kind of give you an opportunity to um, ask questions, uh, that sort of thing. All right. Uh, with that being said, um, let's get started. So. Uh, before I actually jump into anything, um, I recognize that a lot of you today with us are first years. Um, and a lot of you, even if you're not first years, you're sort of first time CTF goers. Um, and that's awesome. Um, that's really good. This is kind of, you're like our target audience. You're the people that we want showing up to the CTF. Um, and so I just wanted to take a second to define exactly what a CTF is. Oh, sorry. I can so hear I myself. Give me one second. second. Is someone not muted? You should be good. I just muted them. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Yusuf. All right. Um, yeah. So, what is a what is a CTF? So, a CTF is a capture the flag event. Um, so. Uh, the reason it's called a capture the flag event is because it's this competition essentially where you solve a series of challenges and you're trying to search for this string um, which is called a flag. Uh, and what you do is that you take this flag and then you exchange this flag for points. And basically once you sum up all the flags um, or all the points that you get from those flags, um, you get a point sum and the team uh, with the highest point sum is the team that wins. Um, there are a lot of CTFs. Um, they're used very frequently as a, a teaching tool. Um, and there are a lot of ty types of CTFs. So IS Session CTF, for example, is a Jeopardy style CTF. That means that you have different categories. You pick the category and you sort of solve that challenge. Uh, but then you have things like war games. War games are basically kind of the same thing, but they're permanent. Like they go on all year. And they're great practice uh, for. Um, for CTFs. Uh, there are also these really tough CTFs called uh, Network King of the Hill CTFs. Um, they're really cool. You basically uh, uh, have to sort of uh, get into a network um, and then you have to you know, start defending it and prevent other people from getting in and you sort of have to hold your hill uh, for the longest amount of time. Okay, but that's that's not what we're doing. Uh, that's, that's pretty advanced. Our CTF is a Jeopardy style. Uh, style CTF. Other really great CTFs that are sort of like in the in the beginner category, much like ours, would be Magpie CTF, which just happened. It's actually hosted by the University of Calgary, and also Pico CTF, which is happening right now and actually should serve as really good practice for our CTF. So if you didn't know that Pico CTF is happening right now, you should really sign up and do some challenges uh, so that you are actually prepared uh, for uh, our CTF. Uh, they're they're going to be very similar um, in terms of difficulty, at least. Um, so yeah, that's what a CTF is. Uh, so what are we going to do today? So today's objectives, I've already mentioned, we want to try to kind of complete a dry run of IS Session CTF 2021 um, to help you and us get comfortable. Okay. Um, but the second objective as well is to do kind of a comprehensive test on our infrastructure. So Yusuf just told me, you know, there's like 100 people, right, uh, watching. Uh, that's awesome. Um, so we want to see what happens when 100 people hit our infrastructure. Um, expect things to break today. Um, that's going to be completely normal. Uh, the point that we're doing this right now, so it doesn't happen in a week's time during the actual CTF, it'll allow us to kind of monitor, you know, how much CPU we need, how much RAM we need, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, but hopefully things don't break. Um, and you'll see by the end of today, actually, we're going to have uh, four challenges for you to solve that we're going to kind of be releasing one by one. So what's on the agenda? So we're going to go through some basics, you know, why IS Session CTF, why you should participate. Um, date and time, mode of delivery, prizes. Everybody's excited about prizes. Uh, we're going to go through some of the nitty gritty, so like rules, um, the COC, uh, just a 
the short version, I promise. Uh, the flag format, uh, different challenge types, what you should expect. Uh, and then we're going to get into sort of the role of volunteers and how you can actually get help during the CTF. And then, as I said, we're going to go through those sort of practice challenges at the very end uh, to do that test that I spoke about. So let's get into the basics. So what is IS Sessions CTF? So it's a Jeopardy style, beginner friendly CTF. It's made by students for students. So the exec team uh, that works on this, as well as all the challenge developers, well, most of the challenge developers, um, they are students, uh, much like you. So uh, I was in first year, I'm now in fourth year. Um, you know, Jem and Nash, for example, are only in second year and they're doing this. And hopefully this should, you know, motivate you next year to apply to IS sessions uh, so that you can organize the CTF and make, make it even uh, better than uh, this year. So um, it's for the whole community. So it's for students, for alumni, for industry professionals. It's kind of like a chance to bring everybody together in this like huge endeavor. And we put like, I kid you not, tens of thousands of hours into this thing trying to make it perfect on game day. So what will you do? You're going to solve about 100 plus challenges, uh, hopefully not all of them. You're, you're not expected to solve all 100 challenges, I promise. Um, and then you're going to attend workshops. And these workshops are actually presented by our, by our sponsors. Um, and I'll go over those later. And then underneath kind of ev everything, you're going to be supported by, by mentors. So uh, we have volunteers that have signed up uh, to sort of provide assistance throughout the day. Like if you have a technical problem or you need like a nudge in the right direction, um, or you need like just a recommendation about like what to Google, that sort of thing. Uh, that's what our mentors are for. And our goals are really to, to provide a, a great learning experience. We also want to grow IS Sessions beyond Sheridan. Uh, that's really important to us. So me and CK were just talking about that. Um, so we, you know, we have 10 schools, if I'm not mistaken, signed up right now, which is awesome, right? That's more than any other year. Um, so uh, really, really excited about that. And then also we want to develop a CTF culture, right? Um, so this is something that's honestly kind of been lacking at, at Sheridan. Um, we don't have like you know teams that go and regularly participate in CTFs, and this event can be like the, the catalyst, if you want, or the adrenaline shot that does that. So why should you participate? Um, let's start from the from the left, right? The, the first reason you should participate is prizes, right? We have a ton of great prizes, uh, which I'll go over in a bit. Uh, the second reason is really learning. right? So you're going to be solving challenges. You're going to be sitting in workshops. There's a lot to, to get out of that. Um, and a lot of what you're going to be experiencing is a lot of how you should think in the real world. It's all practical skills. It's not like what you learn in the classroom, right? In the classroom, it's a lot very theory-based, but what we do at IS Session CTF is, is very, very practical. And you know that, right, if you've, if you've done a lot of CTFs before. Um, but there are two other reasons that I think are also really important. If you're in third year right now, or honestly any year, right, and you're looking for a co-op, the CTF increases your job eligibility by, like, a crazy amount. Like it is, it is insane. Um, the first question that I was asked when I went to my co-op interview was, "How many CTFs do you participate in?" We participate in NorthSec every year, and it's important for us to have like a killer CTF team. Um, and I said, "You know what? I, I've actually participated in a couple, and they really liked that. You know, they didn't expect much from an intern, but they really liked that I was I was trying." Uh, and then finally, like. You know, the, the, the reason we do this is because is it's fun, right? Forget InfoSec for a second. Um, we want you to have a lot of fun. We want people to get together. At the end of the day, all of this stuff is, is sort of, you know, um, uh, fun comes above InfoSec, meeting people, uh, interacting with them, making friends. That's really what matters in life. And uh, we try to create a fun environment for you to do that. OK, but you're thinking right now, OK, well, all of this sounds great, but I'm a beginner. Well. That's great, because let me tell you a story about one of our IS Sessions executives. So here we Sorry, have- I'm just going to interrupt. I'm leaving this call right now. I don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> Sounds good. So this is Yusuf. Uh, I don't know, probably like seven or eight years old. He's green. He has no CTF experience. He's eager to learn. He is, he's enthusiastic. Yusuf is you right now, OK? And you know what? Yusuf keeps showing up. You know, he keeps trying. Um, even though you know it's hard, he just keeps trying to make it, and he has faith that eventually he's going to soak up enough information to, uh, you know, grow up, and eventually he's going to be, you know, uh, this cool Yusuf, right? Guy's got a leather jacket on. He knows the basics. Uh, you know, fake it till you make it. Your your family thinks you're a hacker on the fringes of society. Uh, you've got girls on your Facebook profile. <laughs> 
jokes thing. Slay, man. <laughs> Slay. Um, and then eventually you become experienced, cool, calm, collected. You're a top contender, right? Uh, as you do more and more and more of these things. Uh, and then eventually you become Kurt. And Kurt is like this legendary Pokemon, right? He understands the journey. He's gone through it all. He becomes Aya Sessions president. Uh, and he wants, he wants to give back, right? Um, and he wants to, to create a, a, an amazing experience for everybody. Um, so, so, so does the entire IS Sessions exec team. I, I couldn't fit all your pictures on one slide, but, but you know, I chose to pick on two of you. Um, but really, the, the key to kind of making this progression, just, just to bring it back to, to the more you know, serious tone, is to, to really keep showing up and to keep practicing. Right. Um, this is the same thing with coming to IS Sessions meetings. The first like 10 times you show up, I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't understand anything that was going on. There was just a lot of terms being thrown around, but eventually you pick it up and it gets really, really good. OK, so hopefully that should serve as really good motivation. Let's run through these pretty quickly. Um, so the event, if you don't know this by now, I don't know why you're here. Um, so Saturday and Sunday, March 27 and 28, we're going to start at 9 AM on the first day and the second day. Uh, on the first day, we're going to end at 9 PM. So we're going to take uh, the challenges down. On the second day, we're going to end at 6 PM. And that's uh, the closing ceremonies uh, will, will basically end by then. The mode of delivery, it'll be 100% online uh, and 100% global. Uh, global doesn't mean that everybody can participate. Um, it just means that uh, basically, you know, I, I understand it's COVID time, so you actually might be like in a completely different country right now. And that's totally cool. One of our goals was to try to make it as accessible to, to as many people as possible. So we're going to be using CTFD uh, for challenges. Uh, if you've done CTFs before, you should be like really comfortable with this. Pretty much everyone uses CTFD. Um, we're going to be doing sponsored workshops over YouTube and some Zoom. So there's, I think, one workshop. I think Deloitte's workshop is on Zoom. Uh, and then we're going to be doing mentor support questions and team communication in the Discord server that you're in right now. Okay, uh, And we're going to kind of use a ticketing system, which Kurt will demo very shortly. In terms of schedule, so this is, I think, the first time we talk about the schedule. So we're going to kick off the day at 9 AM the first day, Kurt and I. Uh, then we have a keynote uh, by uh, John, John Simpson or Thraki, uh, if you know him in this Discord. Um, uh, so he's going to be doing the keynote. Um, then the competition will start at 10 AM, hopefully. Uh, then we're going to run basically through three workshops uh, by Trend Micro, Bell, and Deloitte. Then we're going to sleep. Um, and then Sunday, we're going to do the day two kickoff. We're going to do another uh, two workshops. The Security Compass workshop will run twice for reasons that we will talk about. Uh, then we're going to uh, freeze the scoreboard you know, to build up suspense at about 4 PM. The competition will end at 5. And then we'll have the closing ceremonies at 5.30. By the way, I totally forgot to mention, if you have any questions, um, the execs can answer them right now, if you like, or you can just wait until the very end and we'll have sort of a, a question period. Challenge categories. Um, so we have 111 challenges. It's a crazy number of challenges. So most CTFs only have about, like, have about 40 or 50. Um, the goal here is to kind of create, give you as many categories as possible. And then you kind of get to choose which ones uh, you want to work on, right? Um, depending on your interests. So you're, you're by no means expected to actually solve all 111. I don't think any team will. I mean, if you do, amazing. Uh, but really, it's meant to just be like, okay, you're going to focus on the categories that you're comfortable with, or maybe you want to, you know, focus on categories that you're not comfortable with and start learning stuff about that. A couple of things I want to highlight here is the trivia and the sponsored workshops. So trivia is a really easy category. If you're a beginner, it's a really good way to amass points really, uh, you know, at the beginning, really early. Sponsored workshops are also worth points. So for going to a workshop, so basically for, for doing nothing, for going to a workshop and just sitting and listening, right? you are going to get the maximum amount for a challenge, which is 100 points. So I highly encourage you to, to go to workshops. They're, they're really great. And I'll, I'll talk about them in just a second. And then we're going to have some uh, surprise bonuses. Uh, we're not really sure exactly what those are going to be yet, uh, but we're, we're in the works. They're going to be like uh, kind of like achievements, uh, you know, if, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, prizes. So the top three teams are going to get um, one of these three bundles. So the Bookworms bundle, the Arduinists bundle, and then the Generalists bundle. Uh, and essentially, what's going to happen is that if you're in first place, you get first pick out of these three bundles. If you're in second place, you get second pick. And if you're in third place, you get third pick. Now, the next 17 teams, this is something that Nash 
um, our treasurer has worked on and has delivered uh, big time is that basically we really hated the fact that only three teams got prizes, but the next 17 teams as well will get Try Hack Me licenses um, on a three month subscription. And those are going to be premium licenses, by the way. So, so it gives you access to all of the rooms on Try Hack Me and can really sort of push your learning journey even past the CTF. Now, I just want to mention really quickly here, only current students can win prizes. Okay, that's that's really, really important. Okay, so that's um, the big one more thing so yeah, on the prizes. Um, sure, yeah. The Try Hack Me, uh, we are limited because they are, it was, uh, the funding for it was provided by the Sheridan Student Union. We have a um, a like limit we can give out to non-Sheridan students specifically for the Try Hack Me. So up to four non-Sheridan teams can claim the Try Hack Me prizes. Um, anybody can win the top three, but just for the Try Hack Me prizes, only four non-Sheridan teams can win uh, those prizes. Um, and then the rest have to be Sheridan students. Um, just want to make that, I have to, we'll make that more clear later on as well. Absolutely, yeah, it, it, it's a really good point. Um, and, and this is just part of a, a restriction that is, is placed on us by the SSU. Uh, but also the, the way the ratio works out um, makes it sort of like by the law of averages and by statistics that that's what it's gonna end up being anyway. Um, so hopefully um, everyone ends up getting a prize, um, but yeah, a, a, an important thing to, to um, Take note of. Sorry, Lloyd. Um, on on, <clears throat> on the workshops, um, mm -hmm. more than one person on a team can attend the workshop. However, only one person will be submitting the flag. The team will only end up getting one hundred points, even if or all four people um, attend the workshop. Just making that very clear. Yeah, really, really good point as well. So yeah, like a, a workshop is basically just like any other challenge. Okay, so if one person on the team solves a you know a sysadmin challenge. Um, the whole team solves that challenge. This is a team sport. Um, you're doing everything as a team. Um, so it actually might be efficient not to send everybody to a workshop. But of course, if your goal is just to learn and, and everybody's interested in that workshop, then you're free to do that uh, as well. Uh, thanks, guys. OK, so let's get into just a little bit of the nitty gritty here. Um, we kind of started that already. Um, so how do you win? Are there hints? So we've already mentioned top 20 teams win a prize. Um, the placement on the scoreboard is determined by the number of points, obviously, right? Uh, in case of a tie, the team to reach the number of points first receives a higher placement. And then the other team gets an honorable mention. Okay, I hope, hope that was clear. Um, and if you both finished you know, at the same time, um, I don't know what we're going to do by then. Probably a coin flip of, of some sort, but that shouldn't happen. Um, Challenges and hints. So challenges will range uh, from 10 points to 100 points. Um, everybody's going to start with 50 points just for reading the COC, the Code of Conduct. Uh, and the reason is we kind of want to give you a point balance so you can purchase hints. So on that note, we have hints this year, and you have to buy them. So essentially, you get sort of a, a balance of 50 points at first so that you can buy a few hints for free. And then you have to start sort of earning your keep. Right, um, And again, if you think like 50 points is a little bit, remember you have the sponsored workshops and remember that you have the trivia, right? And remember that there's a lot of challenges, like if you're really comfortable with a category, you should be able to solve without actually purchasing a hint. So that should really help you. Um, you can definitely ask questions of mentors. Uh, they're never really going to give you the answer. The mentors are there to help you with like technical difficulties. They're going to provide you just a little bit of guidance, maybe some resources, but they're never going to give you the answer. And that's because this is still a competition. Uh, we still have to kind of um, uh, re respect that, right? Okay, uh, code of conduct. Wow. <laughs> All right. Louis sucks. This is revenge for that one slide, isn't it? Wow. Wow. Have fun. <laughs> OK, um, so code of conduct. Uh, basically, uh, obviously, zero tolerance policy for harassment, assault, physical or verbal, right? Pretty easy, I think, to, uh, to adhere to that. Um, a couple of things that might not be so obvious, especially if this is your first time. Um, you are not really allowed to do any kind of brute forcing or scanning okay, on any of the challenges or on the uh, 
CTF infrastructure as a whole, okay? So if you need to do some sort of brute forcing, it will explicitly say in the challenge instructions, you are allowed to use brute forcing for this challenge. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there is exactly one challenge that will require you to do that, okay? So unless you see explicitly, you know, you can go ahead and brute force your heart out um, on this challenge, do not brute force. And many of the challenges where we expect you to think, oh, maybe I should brute force that login box, we say you're not allowed to brute force that login box. So please pay attention to that warning. Uh, we are monitoring everything on the CTF, uh, you know, for, for the CTF, we are monitoring challenges. And if we have suspicion that somebody's brute forcing, uh, unfortunately, we, we do have to take um, um, action. Um, Good question, Louis. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, when you say no scanning, does that mean that we can't use tools like uh, Nmap? Yeah, great question. So, yeah, things like Nmap you're not really allowed to use. Uh, there is one challenge that actually does require you to use Nmap. Um, but again, in the challenge instructions, it will say you are allowed to do scanning for this challenge. Um, other examples would be like Durbuster, for example, um, GoBuster, that kind of stuff. Stuff you would see in like a, uh, you know, a hack the box type scenario. Um, you don't really need to, to do them. Honestly, also, like it is going to be a huge waste of time for you if you try to brute force because um, it's just not going to be useful to you solving the challenge. Again, unless it's ex explicitly stated in the instructions. Uh, does that answer your question, Nash? Totally. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, also, just a quick data collection disclaimer. Um, so uh, we are going to be collecting certain information about you. Um, this is kind of in our privacy policy. So, so things like your IP address, your username, uh, your school email, your Discord tag, uh, your location data, uh, and your student number, but only if you're from Sheridan. Okay, and this is essentially just for, for CCR or co-curricular record purposes. Okay. Um, we are only going to keep this information so that we can sort of enforce the COC, but as soon as the competition is over, we'll basically just anonymize all of this data. We don't need any of the PII, and we'll just keep like the anonymized data. So basically like the submission and hint data so that we can see, okay, well, how many challenges did everybody solve? How did first years do compared to third years? Um, so that kind of statistics, uh, th they're going to be helpful for us when we uh, you know, uh, design a CTF later on uh, in the future. Uh, the flag format. So everybody probably wants to know what the flag format is. So the flag format is flag, then curly braces, then 10 lowercase hex characters. Okay. If you prefer regex, this is the regex version. And if you prefer examples, this is what a flag will look like. Flags are going to be case sensitive. Okay. So make sure that flag is capitalized like this and that here inside it is lowercase. Okay. And that's how the flag will appear in a lot of challenges. Now, um, you are not necessarily going to be looking for like exactly a flag like this in every challenge. Okay? Sometimes you actually have to convert the input or the thing that you are trying to find into this flag format. So how do you do that? The way that you do this conversion is using the command that you, we have right here. So you do echo dash and insert what you find. So here you would just insert whatever thing that you're looking for. You would get the SHA-256 sum, which is just a hash function, and then you would take the first 10 bytes out of that. So let me just do a quick, a very, very quick demo. Um, <laughs> Yusuf loves me, apparently. Give me one second. So here I have this terminal. Um, you might want to blow it up if yeah, you can. Uh, I always forget. One second. Tamux doesn't like my. Okay. Um, yeah. So, for example, let's say I asked you a question like I gave you a data set and I asked you how many times did the user, um, Jamie, right, log in? And Jamie logged in 10 times, right? So, obviously, it's never going to be this short. Um, so that you can't brute force it. But let's just keep it simple. And let's say you find that the answer is actually 10. What you can do is you can go echo dash n, right? 
and then you put 10 here. So this is what you find, right? Um, and essentially what this does is just prints 10 onto the screen. Notice that the dash n there prevents it pr from printing a new line. So you're going to do echo dash n, pipe it to SHA-256 sum, right? And you're getting basically the hash of the number 10. If you don't know what a hash is, it's just basically this fixed size string that you can apply on any input. Um, and you get this, this hash. And a hash looks exactly like this, what you see here. So now we, we want the first 10 bytes of that hash, right? So the first 10 bytes of that hash, or the first 10 characters, uh, if you prefer, you use using you do using cut. So cut dash b to one to ten, and you get that. So now what you're going to do is that you are going to make flag like this, and then just copy this right, and paste it in here, and there you go. You've got your flag. Okay. So capitalized F L A G, and then 10 lowercase hex digits. You submit that on CTFD and you get the points that are owed to you. Now, if you didn't really understand what this is, don't worry. So it's on our website. It's on the ctf.issessions.ca if you want to sort of see it. Also, in every challenge that you have to do this, it is it, it explicitly says in the instructions, you, you get basically get this command and you just have to fill in this piece right here. Okay. Um, any deviations from that will be explained in the instructions. So it, it should really be very clear. You would just have basically have to just copy this, right? Um, one sec. So copy this. And if I just, you know, run this again, I get the flag again. And again, I just enclose that in flag uh, curly braces. Okay. So hopefully uh, that was clear. If you have any questions, we can, we can talk about it after. Um, where is my present? There we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just did the demo. So there are four challenge types. Um, so there are file-based challenges, hosted challenges, um, hosted challenges that are SSH or Netcat-based. Then there are hosted challenges that are web-based. And then there are sponsored workshops. So what do I mean by a file-based challenge? So, for example, we have a challenge called Crackles, right? And crackles is this reversing challenge, as you can see here. And you basically, it's called file-based because you all that you have to do is essentially just download a zip file. And the zip file contains everything that you need to solve that challenge. Uh, and then once you find the answer, you submit it in this flag submission box. OK, so that's a file-based challenge. Then we have hosted challenges. And hosted challenges are, what hosted means is that it's like, um, it's, it's running as a server um, somewhere. Uh, so, uh, you know, an easy example would be something like, uh, just like a machine, you know, that you have to log into. Or it could be like a website that you have to connect to, right, in the, in the browser or using a command line tool or something like that. Um, so an SSH challenge or a Netcat-based challenge, it, you know, is, is exactly what you imagine. So basically you would use either SSH or Netcat to connect that challenge. You would see here that you have all of the information that you need to connect, as well as the command that you actually need to type on the command line for you to connect. Okay. So basically you just fill in the information here in the template, you paste it on the command line, and that's pretty much everything you need to do to connect. If this is unclear, I would highly recommend doing Bandit uh, from, um, I think ring zero, right? Uh, and uh, Bandit is like this beginner box, and it'll teach you a lot of this uh, kind of SSH type stuff. And then there's a web-based challenge. And basically, a web-based challenge, you have to go to a website. You have to interact with a web server. OK, so there's going to be a URL, much like this one, uh, that you have to connect to. And finally, the last type of challenge, as I mentioned, is the sponsored workshops. So there are uh, five workshops that you can go to. The first is an introduction to end-day vulnerability research. Okay. Um, this is uh, going to be done by, by John Simpson from Trend Micro. Um, then you're going to be uh, doing a threat hunting workshop using Mordor. Um, then you're going to be doing, uh, for, uh, sorry, that, that's done by Bell. Then from Deloitte, you have a logs and incident response workshop, and then a Wireshark workshop. And then Security Compass has this really awesome um, uh, Bluetooth hacking workshop. Um, so that's going to be uh, really cool as well. 
Okay, so I highly encourage going to these workshops. Um, a lot of these are actually being delivered by alumni. So all of you, you know, you're going to be um, you're going to be alumni very soon, and hopefully you come back as well and do workshops like this uh, for for the community. Um, in terms of challenge progression, um, so on the first day we're going to be releasing some challenges, and then on the second day we're going to be releasing uh, so basically like uh, the the other portion of challenges. Um, so X percent challenges on the first day, Y percent challenges on the second day. The reason I don't have numbers there is because we, we haven't really figured it out yet. So, uh, you know, uh, basically whatever challenges you see on that day, uh, solve them. Um, the challenges from the first day do carry over to the second day. So basically by the second day, you should have access to everything. Uh, and it's going to be a mix of like easy, intermediate, and difficult challenges. So, um, all right, how to succeed. Um, I see that I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to just run through this really quickly. Um, the most important thing to remember is, you know, what does success look like to you and your team, right? Success doesn't necessarily mean winning the CTF, okay? Some of you are first years, some of you are fourth years, um, some of you have done a thousand CTFs before, some of you have done no CTFs, right? So what does success mean to you? On my first CTF, success to me was setting up my Kali Linux VM properly. Okay, um, so once I was able to do that, then I was able to actually solve challenges. Uh, please, please don't be discouraged. Like in in the first IS session CTF I did, I came or my team came in in absolute last place. Right, um, so uh, don't don't feel bad about that. Just keep trying. Um, you're gonna do really, really well in the future if you stick to it uh, and, and you believe in yourself. Uh, Jem Chalen, uh, one of our, our honorable execs, uh, part of uh, a CTF team called the Raid Against the Machine, uh, they're famous now, uh, said CTFs are a team sport, and indeed they are. We strongly recommend that you have a team. Okay? Um, one, it you, know, you get to have fun with some people, um, you get to solve things together, bounce ideas off of each other, uh, but um, most importantly is that if you actually really you know want to do really well a team is pretty important uh super important as well please take care of yourself like don't get stressed right drink water take breaks annoy your cat um just you know if rest is important to doing well so make sure you you know uh stand up every once in a while and just like you know go for a walk or, or, or something like that i promise your productivity will actually go higher uh, have fun, already said that. Um, if you're a beginner, obviously don't start with like reversing challenges. Uh, don't spend too long on one challenge. Move on, right? If, you, if you, you're if you struggling or like you have no idea where to begin. Again, don't try to solve 100, all 111 challenges. Pick what you're interested in. Have a strategy before you go in. Uh, be conservative with the hints, okay? And this is really important. Uh, Kurt actually uh, picked up on this. Uh, please don't just like spend a hint without consulting the rest of your team. They're going to get really pissed off at you because you have a shared point total, right? So if you go and spend the hint, they're going to be really mad. Um, and I can't stress this, stress this enough. I, I've maybe created like 40 or 45 challenges now, but I've only seen somebody solve my challenge, like one of my challenges about three days ago. I can't stress this enough. Please take the time to actually do the research to Google, right? read the documentation and I don't mean just like skim the documentation like actually read the documentation write things down right what did I find and then every once in a while take a step back and just be like okay what have I found so far how are all of these things connected that's really important it's it's a skill not just in a CTF it's a skill that's really important just in like being a productive person and then after all is said and done, the whole point of CTFs is that you can identify your strengths and your weaknesses so that you can go and start practicing so that you can do better at the next one and so you can do better at your job. Um, tools are super important. Um, I definitely recommend like a Kali Linux VM or a Rumnux uh, VM. So these are uh, basically VMs that are sort of available. Um, they're, they have a lot of tools on them. Uh, they're, they're used by cybersecurity professionals. Kali is like a pen testing VM. Rumnux is like a reversing slash forensics uh, VM. Definitely know how to SSH. Definitely know how to netcat. If you can't do those things, you can't access like 35% of the challenges, right? Have Wireshark installed. We have a packet analysis category. 
practice on Pico CTF and then go through Bandit uh, over the wire. And I believe that's it. So here, uh, actually before the break, now we're going to show you our support system. So I'm going to hand it over to Kurt, who is going to be showing you how you actually get help uh, during the CTF. Cool. Yeah, let me just stream this. Um, Jamie, you might want to switch to my stream if you can. And let me know when you're ready. Alrighty. Luai, I just want to say, you know the, the slide where I, it said Luai sucks on the Code of Conduct? I did that when you were editing. I did that when you were editing the slides. I completely forgot that I did it and I didn't remove it. I shouldn't have left it there. That was completely by accident. Like, worst I, place ever, too. I, I, yeah, I know. I love that it's the most serious slide, too. <laughs> My apologies, everyone. That was supposed to be a serious slide. Oh, it, it was pretty serious, slide. wasn't it, Yusuf? Yeah, man. I'm sorry. I killed that. That's my fault. <laughs> I'm actually gonna, for this, I'm actually gonna um, take the ticket channel off mute so people can attempt to use the ticket. So, um, all right. Uh, Luai, you're still streaming if you um, care. Uh, uh, I do. No. This guy just left the call. What would I goofball? Yeah, so, okay, people are already using it. Okay, so um, during the competition, we will have, if you need mentor help, um, I would recommend that uh, you know you Google things first, talk to your team, uh, use the hints, um, and then after all that, if you still uh, need help with the challenges, uh, we'll have a lot of mentors available to help uh, the participants. And one of the ways we're going to facilitate this help is um, if you notice here, we have a ticket test channel. It's in the Discord under the stream category currently. Um, you can see people are uh, already starting to use it. So basically, all you have to do is you go to the ticket, the whatever ticket channel we have during the competition day, but for now we're gonna use this channel, Ticket Test, and you click uh, the emoji con under the ticket tool uh, panel thing here. Once you click it, it will create a new channel. Um, as you can see at the top here, It'll these channels are private, only mentors can see them. Um, oh geez, okay. Uh, so all these these are all mentors, by the way. These are uh, I'm fairly certain. Here we go. CK needs help. So basically, yeah. So you click the uh, emoji con. It creates a new ticket. Uh, all our mentors can see this. We'll be delegating who goes to see what. We'll click on the ticket. In the ticket support, it'll ask you to name your challenge, uh, your team name, um, and and uh, maybe describe some of the issues you're having, just so we can get an idea. Um, and then once we uh, have somebody that's ready to help you, we'll simply say, you know, um, uh, I'll take this one or something. Like, I'll say that so the other mentors know. And then I will look for your group channel, which I actually should have mentioned first. Um, I don't have any at the moment. Actually, I can go down here. OK, so pretend this is our CTF, what our CTF Discord will look like. Uh, by the way, just in case you're wondering, we are using the IS Sessions Discord. It'll be completely changed just for those two days. So during those two days, we'll have group channels. You'll only be able to see your group channel. Um, and basically, we'll hop into comms with you. We'll try to help you. Um, and then when we feel like we've helped you enough or uh, you've gotten what you wanted from the mentors, we'll uh, lock the ticket. You can see what's going here. Press the check mark, and the ticket will be closed. And then we can delete the ticket, and it will uh, remove the ticket from uh, the queue. And we'll just basically be going through these tickets, trying to help people as much as possible. I um, hope that made sense. Any questions about that? Luai, any questions? No, no, I think that was pretty clear. Yeah, it's just a ticketing system. It should make sure that everybody's in a lineup. Um, should make things pretty smooth and efficient and should make sure that nobody, no matter if you're a fourth year or a first year, can get help uh, in, in the order that you need it. So. Yep. Cool. Um, Is it supposed to pop a ticket up? on our side to enter information, or uh, is that only once you prompt us, it just lets you know that there's a ticket for us and then you jump to our thing? Um, so once you once your ticket pops up, I'll actually change what this ticket says here. So if you notice, it says, someone will see you shortly. Um, it'll say like what the information we want. 
So um, once you click the ticket, your channel will pop up. You'll see the ticket pop up, and you can go in there. Okay, so it's just not turned on right now that the tickets will yeah. show up for us. Um, so if you click, actually, if you go in right now um, to the ticket test channel and click this button, it should show up for you. It's um, not showing up anywhere that I'm seeing for um, the for a ticket for us unless it's buried somewhere. Um, at the very top, you don't see anything? Okay. No. Uh, Kurt, do, do they have to have the CTF participant role? No, there is no CTF participant role. So anybody oh. should be able to create tickets to them. Okay. Um, during the break, uh, I'll go over it with you and see if they're if we can. I was just you. I was just making sure that it was working that way by uh, before hand, right? So because I hadn't seen anything pop up on my end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll troubleshoot with you during the break. Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess I'll hand it back to Luai. Uh, cool. So <clears throat> I I guess we're we're actually done the. Um, sort of presentation portion. So we have like maybe 10, 15 minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Uh, of course, you can you can ping us later, but let's try to get as many of them out as possible now so that everybody hears them. So if you have any questions, please post them now. Uh, okay, so what is a reverse challenge? So uh, I think you mean uh, reversing there. So uh, a reversing challenge is like a, it's a reverse engineering challenge. So there's a category called reversing and malware analysis. Um, so this this category might have something like um, uh, you know binary exploitation or uh, a crack me. If, if you don't know what any of those terms mean, I wouldn't start with a reversing challenge at the very beginning. Uh, those challenges, you don't really do a course on that until you're in like fourth year. Um, but if you have like an interest, then those uh, challenges are available to you for sure. If you're a beginner, I would I would recommend like, uh, like programming, um, trivia again, sponsored workshops, web. Uh, this should be, there, there are some pretty good challenges in there uh, that should be really good for beginners. OK, um, let me see. Will using a VPN interfere with any of the challenges? Uh, nope. If you use a VPN, it should be exactly the same experience. Uh, is there binary exploitation? A little bit. Um, there's a couple of challenges. Um, they're going to be really in the, in the reversing category. Uh, if one person attends the workshop, the whole team gets the points. Yes, exactly. So a, a workshop is just like any other challenge. So if one person attends it, the whole team gets the points. Is SQL injection part of the web problems? I, I can't I can't reveal that information. Uh, but I mean, generally speaking, in a lot of CTFs, yes, SQL injection does does make an appearance. But uh, wink, will it make an nudge, nudge, hint, hint. Our, yeah, will it make an appearance in our CTF? I, I don't know. Um, will I be able to use my leapfrog to compete? Um, sorry, what is what is a leapfrog? Does anyone know? It's a, I think it's uh, a child laptop? education toy, Louie. Uh, per perfect yeah. for uh, CTFs. Perfect for CTFs. Great hacking tool. OK, well, <laughs> if you guys say so, <laughs> that's that's good. Louie, it's horrible. I'm lying. Oh, you is that OK? And you failed. It's a child's computer. Oh okay. I, I don't I don't know this. I don't know these things. Although you know what? If somebody configures that device and if you win a single challenge with the leapfrog on the CTF, I will personally reward you with like a cameo video of just expressing my pride cuz that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I mean you you can use a leapfrog if you want. I think somebody was doing that Naham Khan, Naham Khan, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, off of their phone. Uh, I saw a tweet about that a couple of days ago. Uh, Samsung fridge for sure. Um, thanks for everyone who's supporting me and letting me know what a what a leapfrog is. Uh, for the programming challenges, which languages should be we should we be familiar with and will be used heavily? Um, it's a mix. Uh, there's definitely some Python in there, some JavaScript, some Bash. Uh, no PowerShell. Um, there's some Java. There's there's pr pretty much everything, yeah. There's some C. There's a lot. Hey, Louis, um, you know what else there is? There's also a open source Linux kernel for the uh, Leapfrog. 
<laughs> oh, wow. that should be a challenge. We should we should like make a challenge. To the wow, that. actually, it's on Leapfrog's website. They have okay. This is no. I'm dead serious. If somebody actually figures this out, I'll, I will be eternally impressed. Wow. Now now I'm interested. Now I'm going to do some research later. <laughs> um, to Kevin's question as well too. Some of like the challenges you'll be able to like I guess choose kind of what language you want to use. So obviously pick whatever language you're comfortable with. Um, it's just to solve the challenge, right? So um, yeah, but you'll you'll know what I mean when you look at a specific challenge. Uh, you'll just have to program something. You can program it in probably any language that you feel comfortable with. Some challenges are programming language specific. Um, so, but again, you will know based off the challenge what language to use if you can choose. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Um, I see there's a question. How many tickets can a team submit at once? If there are two people working on different challenges, do they open one ticket or multiple? Uh, I think that's a good question for Kurt. Kurt, do you want to take that one? I would, I would recommend opening one ticket at a time um, because we will be joining your group chat to talk to you. Um, so it would get kind of convoluted if uh, multiple people were trying to be helped in the same. Of course, we could make new channels, but um, one at a time would be recommended. Cool. Um, OK, so will there be reverse shell challenges? Um, there. I feel like whatever answer I give you is just going to confuse you. So I'm just going to choose not to answer the question. And we'll surprise you on game day. Be ready for anything. Exactly what I was going to say. I think, you know, questions about specific challenges, um, you're going to have to wait and find out. Yeah. You'll, see in, you'll see in just a little bit. Google will be your friend. It's OK. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know every challenge. You don't need to know all of it. The more actually, the more important skill for a CTF is actually finding the information to solve the challenge. So it's literally in the survival kit, exactly what yeah. Jamie said. You need to go in there you know, completely blind. At, if you don't know a skill, guess how you're going to find out? Just you know, employing that Google foo. Yeah, I, I do recommend though, like if I could give like a little piece of advice, like when I was doing CTFs and hackathons and stuff, it's a really good strategy to just pick the easiest ones and get them done it's just to build your confidence and get points. Don't feel like you have to jump into like um, a 50 point question and just bang your head against the wall for three hours trying to solve it. Do some easier ones and just build your confidence, get used to the format and just just take it easy and take your time with it. Um, I, I always find that at every CTF people stress out and they're like, oh, I need points, we need points. Um, enjoy yourself. You will be more productive and find more success um, being steady as opposed to trying to rush and burst through things. Um, that's like my little piece of wisdom for the night. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And, and also uh, to, to that point as well, <clears throat> so every in every category, basically the first three challenges are really meant to be like the easiest challenges that you can kind of imagine in that category. Um, and what the topics that those challenges will, will cover will actually help you on later challenges. So they're not definitely like entirely like related, uh, like like they're not necessarily linked, uh, is what I mean. Uh, but the same concepts do come up again in harder challenges, for sure. Uh, and in, and you know I've, I've taken a look as well at some of the the sponsored challenges, um, and some of those are like like they're being mean. Right, and you really have to have a good grasp on the basics to be able to solve those challenges. Um, so, uh, definitely good, good to start at the beginning. Uh, okay, can we start with A challenge and jump to B and come back to A? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can jump around as much as you want, leave challenges unfinished. That's totally cool. On that point, I don't think it was mentioned, but uh, you have an unlimited amount of flag submissions. Not that you should be like throwing flags at it or tr again trying to brute force it, but like um, you can try and like if you find that you think you found something, try submitting it. You don't have to like hesitate and think, oh, I'm gonna lose my challenges. Um, but yeah, great, great point. And and just so you know, by the way, you are rate limited to seven challenges a minute. Okay, so. Um, you will not succeed if you try to submit more than that. Um, and we will 
look at that as like a, a violation, basically. Um, is there point decay? No. So the challenges are not dynamic. Uh, you retain the amount of points uh, throughout. They retain the, the amount of points throughout the, the game, basically. Uh, I have a few friends interested in participating. Can they still sign up? Uh, absolutely, yeah. So uh, registration, correct me if I'm wrong, closes March 21st or 22nd, something like that. So you still, still have a few, few days. For sure. They obviously have to be students, um, current students, um, and if they're not students, they can they can sign up. But um, basically, we'll just hide them from the scoreboard. They're they're free to solve challenges. That's not a problem. Oh, complexion is typing. Bet he has a, or she has a great complexion. <laughs> I think it's com. Doesn't that say complex alien? I don't know if that's his complexion. Oh, you're right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're so right. You're so right. <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey, Jem, you're just on top of your nickname or Discord name, uh, game, I guess. Our group members signed up as individuals. Do we need to sign up as a group too? So when you sign up, um, you do sign up as an individual, but then you can join a team. So basically, you want you, you want to make sure that you all join the same team. And the team captain, or like the person who created the team, they can uh, send an invite link to the rest of the team members so that that, that so that those people can can join that team. How do you sign up as a team? Um... So if you um, click on the challenges right now, it'll ask you to join a team. You, have, you must be on a team to do any challenges. So even if you're a solo player, it'll prompt you to create a team for yourself. Um, but yeah, so you can't actually um, participate without being on some type of team. Um, if a team has two Sheridan students and two non-Sheridan students, how does that work for prizes? Um, we haven't really talked about that yet, so we will get back to you on that. Um, yo, I'm a noob. <laughs> is this is this CTF for me? So yes, you must have missed uh, the, the first part of my presentation. If you're a noob, that's great. This is the CTF for you. Like this. CTF is, is literally designed for you. And honestly, even if you struggle the whole day and never solve a single challenge and you just manage to set up your, you know, your, your VM or something like that, you will have learned something that you can use the next time. InfoSec is about showing up. Show up or show out. True. Yeah, noob is indeed a matter of perspective. We are all noobs. One more, one more thing about teams. If you, um, when you create a team, you don't have to. Everybody doesn't join the team at the time when it is created. It, uh, a individual will create the team and then give um, the other team members or whoever they want to be on their team uh, the info to join that team, and it will be displayed in your team profile of like what you can give them. So there would either be a team name and a password that you would give the other members, and then they would um, use that info to join the team. Cool. Do we, Kurt, do, you, do we want to do like a quick demo or something? It's actually a good it's idea, a... yeah. Um, yeah. Just a quick thing, if, if, if you guys don't mind. Um, so. There is a full walkthrough on our CTF website, thanks to the great gem on how to set up um, a Kali VM on both Windows, Linux, and um, Mac. So if you have any struggles with that, definitely go check those out. And um, we highly recommend that you have your VM set up before the CTF. That way, when you start the CTF, everything is good to go. Only issue I had following that uh, guide, the volatility three um, was having a lot of issues running, even when you clone the repository. The volpi um, dash h uh, always brought up an error. 
just think that could be um, the yeah I'll definitely I'll definitely look back at that section um all of the things that I had done on on, on that guide I was able to find definitely... the man page another way um but yeah they uh, bring it up by uh, the uh, the vol.py dash h didn't work <laughs> interesting right. okay I'll definitely go back and check that out um thank you yeah, for letting me know if have missed something but I I I, I was gonna roll it back uh, uh th this weekend and uh install it from scratch again and see if I could get it to work properly but awesome okay no I'll definitely take a, take a peek at that uh, so so I see there's a whole bunch of questions about like VMs and and um, uh, links and stuff like that so why don't why don't I actually um, I think everybody should see my screen now um, let's make sure that they can on YouTube as well I will give you a quick walkthrough of the platform right now. So let me go to ctf.issessions.ca. So this is where the uh, event is being hosted, right? Um, and essentially what you're going to see, you're going to see general information. And this has pretty much everything that I just went through uh, in that presentation. Okay. Um, you can see even some of the, the same screenshots um, and a lot more information about the workshops, uh, a lot more information about the prizes, uh, the schedule is going to be filled in here very shortly. And then there's this FAQ. This is how you generate the flag. Then we've been talking about VMs and stuff like that and tools. So here you have tutorials about setting up a VM so you can collapse these, right? Um, learning Netcat. There's a little tutorial here. Um, obviously, there's a lot more resources online. So you know, use this as kind of like a starting point. Uh, learn SSH, installing Volatility 3. Um, you don't necessarily need Volatility 3. Volatility 3 is just like the latest version. You can also get away with Volatility 2. To be honest with you, um, there's one memory analysis challenge. So if you just want to skip this whole part, that's cool too. You just want to say, you know what, I'm not going to do uh, that challenge. That's, that's I'll fine. I'll play well. around with it, see if I can get it going. Yeah. You also learn it, by the way, in, in third year, um, if I remember correctly. Um, top 10 Linux tools. Oh, I totally forgot about this. This is like a, you know, Linux heavy CTF. You definitely want to have like a Linux terminal on hand and you want to at least be aware of these different tools. We're going to be testing a lot of sort of like the basic sort of, yeah, the, the, the basic use of each of these tools. You're pretty much going to end up using each, each and every single one of them. Um, you don't have to. You can substitute these for a programming language. So as Yusuf mentioned, a lot of challenges can be solved in, in many different ways. Uh, and then you have a lot of useful sites here. So if I actually um, log out, so let me show you something. If you register here, so oh, that's interesting. It's filling up my things. Um, oh, no, I'm going to have to solve Kurt's CAPTCHA. That's going to be... Uh, it's the hardest challenge. The first, the first CTF challenge. <laughs> you also get like <laughs> 500 points for doing that. Okay, uh, what should we... Let's just call IS it... IS Sessions test. IS Sessions test. All right. Um, email. Uh, I've used up both my emails. You want to use the CTF uh, email? Oh, yeah, that's true. What is it? Uh, IS Sessions... I think it's ICTF 2021. Yes, ICTF 2021 at gmail.com. Can't use Gmail. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. right. Uh, you can use my that. Sheridan email. Just okay. Kosubeka Sheridan. 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 Oh, you're special, eh? They didn't, make you, they didn't give you a letter. Everybody's going to email. Everybody's going <laughs> to yeah. email right after this. All right, let's fill in uh, my password on LastPass. Let's save that. Um, a Discord tag, we don't care. Test, right? 1444. Um, current school year, so, uh, you know, Kurt's in third year. Uh, student ID, um, we don't really care about this. One, two, three. For now, and then. There you go. Gonna prove I'm a human. All right, everybody, let's help me out here. All right, we need a motor bus. <laughs> So, dude, why? the motor bus is the hardest one. This is the hardest one. Uh, what, what is the difference between a motor bus and a normal bus? I, I don't understand. Man, crazy things Canadians come up with. Little Where left, is... I think. <laughs> little left here? No, the middle one on the left, I think. I oh, see middle one? one? Okay. All right. 
Cool. We're solving a challenge, everybody. Order bus. <laughs> yeah, middle, very middle. Is that That's like it. the official name for a bus? A motor bus? Is that? That's an auto bus. Oh. Auto right, motor, motor You know what? Apparently, oh, I'm humans. human. So I'm good. All right. So I submit that. Um, I uh, need to confirm my email. So, Kurt, can you please do that really quickly? Louis, you're sounding more and more like a bot as you go on. You can't solve the CAPTCHA. You're asking your human to log into the email and confirm it. I'm not trusting you by the second. <laughs> I'm learning so much today. What is a motor bus? What is a leapfrog? This is great. Just but, uh, just based on some of the questions I'm seeing on the stream, stream questions channel, um, I strongly, strongly recommend you guys to do at least the first 10 or 15 levels of Bandit, um, the, the link that Connor just linked as well as a few times earlier on in the chat. Um, these are really good questions and I'm glad you guys are asking them now. So just to kind of you know prepare you guys a bit and to, and to answer all your questions at once, strongly, strongly recommend to, to do these, um, at least the first 10, 15 levels. I think it's almost mandatory. Um, I think, yeah. uh, Jamie, you said that you're going to be posting the recorded workshop soon. Yeah, now, now that I'm home, I have the time, so I will get that done. So anybody Beautiful. who was at that so first followed. workshop, you're already a leg up on the competition. So, yeah, Bandit is definitely the good the good one to start with. It's uh, It builds nicely. Why you should be good. Should be good? Okay. So, um, I guess I should just that all right and if I go now to team okay so you see here what you can do is so I right now I'm an indivi individual I don't have a team yet so I can either join an existing team okay or I can create a team so let's create a team and let's call it the test team extreme okay Ooh. and, and uh, like let's that make this hard so everybody doesn't start logging in. Um, gen secure pass. Please, dude. <laughs> 74. <laughs> you must be learning from Gem, eh? Gem, your message is spreading far and wide. All right, so, and then I'll show you forbid it because it's going to redirect to the, to the challenges. Um, so now, I believe if you go to team, you're the captain. Whoops. Um, uh, it's because you're trying to view a user. I, but like this is oh. the user. Um, the, like you should be fine here. Right. How do I send an invite? It's the so they have the to just use and the password. Yeah. Team name and the password. Oh There's right. Yeah. They have to That's use right. the username okay. and password. Oh no, there is. There is. I, I could have sworn there, there was. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah, you just click this little icon. So invite users. You copy the link, and then you give it to whoever needs to join your team. Okay. Um, I don't know if this will actually like make you join the team. It might just take you to like the login box, right? Uh, actually, it well, takes you to the login box with the uh, group name and password already filled in. I think. Oh, so okay. That's what we use in, with our team. Interesting. Okay. Um, so yeah, you. Uh, yeah. So that's how you sign up. That's how you make a team. Hopefully, that was clear. Uh, any questions that we sort of missed out on? Do I need to install Linux instead? Um, so basically, like, we're just saying Kali or like Remnux because they have like, uh, you know, some forensics tools and, and stuff as well. But to be honest, you, you can get away with just a, a, any Linux VM, to be honest. Uh, uh, the biggest priority is really just having like, you know, your SED, your grep, your awk, uh, your, you know, LS, CD, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Any team member can submit flags. So yeah, Jem answered that already. Yes, every any any member of the team can submit a flag, and once that challenge is solved, um, it can't be solved again. Essentially. So, yeah, team captains are just for setting up and managing teams, um, and you can kick people too if you want to. But it's more for just a. Uh, making the team and setting it up. Okay, uh, 
we probably have to move on. So I'm going to give two more minutes. Uh, and if so, if you have any last minute questions or last two minute questions, please post them now so we can go over them. We were having some questions on uh, why we can't do brute forcing um, because this is a security competition overall. Do you want to just maybe go over um, wh yeah, why yeah. we can't allow brute forcing? That'd be great. Thank you. Sure. It's, it's kind of like a, a fair use policy thing, right? If I have to allow brute forcing on every challenge, um, it means that I have to provision enough resources so that you all can do that. And, and you know, we're, we're you know, a club, we have, we have a certain budget um, that we, we really can't, can't go over. Um, and to be honest, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, to be honest, brute forcing is like a, a pretty easy thing to do. There's a lot of other things that you can test um, and a lot of other things that you should be thinking of before you sort of go to that, to the brute forcing solution. Um, so at least, you know, for this competition, um, most of the challenges are, are like literally 99% of the challenges do not require you to brute force. So it would be a, a massive waste of time. Just one more question. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And in in case people, you know, kind of call your bluff and brute, brute force anyways, do you have any ways, like, I know you said something about, you know, people, you'll take action against people, but how will you do that? Do you have anything in place to, you know, keep track of people brute forcing or, you know? Yeah, kind of so, so we have a whole, like, monitoring setup. So we know exactly what's happening in each challenge um, and which user is doing what. So uh, obviously I'm, I'm not going to say everything. Right. Thank you. No, I just wanted to know if there was a way for you know people to brute force or if they would get caught. But that answered my question. Thank you. Um, there was a question here. So is burp suite allowed? Yeah. Um, because we're not allowed to brute force, but burp suite is kind of a collect. It's a suite, right? Ultimately. So, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on? That? Sure. Yeah. So um, burp suite is is definitely allowed. Um, so again, burp suite is is sort of again a, a suite of tools. So brute forcing is only uh, one of them. Um, so again, if you see a challenge where it says in the challenge instructions that you can brute force something, then you are allowed to, for example, use Burp Suite to go ahead and, and brute force that. But if it doesn't say that, or if it says you are prohibited from doing it, then just assume that you can't. So, and it's well, seven flags per minute, yeah. Right, and one thing I want to just say about the seven flag, flags per minute, uh, there's a... Uh... You know, there's a somewhat well-known strategy in CTFs where you you save you know x amount of flags until the last minute to kind of get people off their guard. You know, people are looking at the scoreboard, they think they're up, and then you know the last minute the team just pumps out like 15 of the of the heaviest points flags just to catch people off guard. Unfortunately, obviously due to the seven flags per minute, um, that strategy just won't work. So you know, keep that in mind when you're playing or when you're planning more of the psychological strategy that goes hand in hand with CTFs, right? Um, you know, don't 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 play yourself, as DJ Khaled would say, and, and save all your flags until the last minute. Just also, you know, those yeah. flags might not work. <laughs> like you never know for sure unless you. Uh... Good point. Good point. Uh, yeah, just keep that in mind, right? S seven flags per minute, and it's all um, it's all good. It's all one. Yeah, yeah Louis. So we got a lot of questions about Burp Suite. Um, I I don't know. I'm just gonna go ahead and say like. If the challenge doesn't explicitly tell you to say brute force a password or to scan for a WebSocket, scan a network port, you probably don't need to do it. Like, I don't think any of the challenges are like tricks, right? Like, there's no trick to finding like, the instructions should be enough, right? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Like, and honestly, like, I'm, I'm just thinking, where would you need to use Burp Suite? Like, yeah, like, there's, <laughs> there's not really, there's not a lot of the stuff you can do with like curl. Um, you can do it like a little bash, like one liner. You can do it like a little Python script. There, there's no, yeah, there, there's no like um, must have burp suite feature that is going to allow you to solve a certain thing. Um, yeah. So hopefully that there's, answers. There's a great question on another uh, question. Uh, that says, are you allowed uh, to make yeah. write ups afterwards? Oh. Uh, yes, yes, you can absolutely. Um, please do. I'm, I'm, yeah, please do. And I'm, I'm thinking, um, like, well, I'm hoping. I haven't really mentioned this to anybody yet, but uh, I know Magpie CTF did this, and maybe we can do it too. But again, no promises. Uh, maybe we'll do like if for some really interesting challenges. If you can do a really nice write up on it, um, we'll give you like some sort of prize as well. Uh, but we, we have to talk about that. So no promises.
Yeah, that's a really good point by uh, Nick there. All righty. <laughs> wow. Great questions. <laughs> So, Rick isn't uh, happy with you, Luai. Why? What's wrong? What did I do? It's Rick, not Nick. Get it right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It says alter ego right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess we are good. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I, I saw that question. OpenVPN. Um, OpenVPN is not needed. You're, of course, free to use it. Um, none of the... Um, uh, none of the challenges require you to like connect using an open VPN certificate that we're going to give you. Everything is going to just be available on the internet. So, yeah. Um, on the CTF site, what are tools slash payloads? Uh, where is that exactly? Survival kit, I assume. I don't think we have anything like that. Oh, tools slash payloads. Look at useful sites. Useful. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, yeah, th these are just like um, some some tools that are helpful to do like simple operations. Like you want to XOR uh, a string with a key, or you want to encode something into UTF-8 um, or into hex or something like that, um, or into base64, or you want to decode something. Um, yeah, this, that's that's really uh, what's what's meant there. T tools and pillows is really not not the right word to use there. Uh, there's there's a, a ton of these. Yeah, uh, you don't need to pay for anything. The entire event is free. Uh, every single challenge is solvable using open source tools. Where do you get them? So again, we, we recommend having a Linux VM um, with maybe like your favorite programming language installed, and that should get you through like 85% of the challenges. If you add Wireshark to that, you will get to about 95% of challenges. So, um, you know, uh, there's basically just have a Linux VM with Wireshark installed uh, and uh, your favorite programming language, and you should be good to go. What's Wireshark? Uh, great question. Yeah, so Wireshark is a tool that allows you to analyze packet captures. Um, so I'm not going to go into like an in-depth explanation. What I'll do is I'll just share like a, a link with you because we, we do have to uh, get going. So it allows you to um, analyze um, packets. So we are going to start now the CTF portion. So I want everybody to offer a prayer to the GCP gods that everything won't go down, uh, but fully expect it to. So let's see what happens. Um, Kurt, uh, do you want to do the honors of releasing our first challenge? Of course. Let me start the CTF. Um... What date is cool. it? 18th? Let's go. Update. And the first one is Nick's correct. What is the name of the next challenge? Uh, request Hell. What a name. What a name. Hey guys, do you want me to switch to Kurt's screen or still leave it on Louis? Uh, uh, Kurt Louis isn't is streaming. Oh, Louis is fine. It, I thought it was Kurt. should be available. Let's check it. Challenges. Oh, yep. Yep, it's there. It's there? Perfect. Cool. Yep, perfect. And um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, was, there's the free points uh, challenge. Oh, right, to yes. Get free hints. It, to get free hints. Um, just so you see what hints are like right now. Uh, what do? What else? I wanted to say something. Um, oh, yeah, the, the way we're going to do this, basically, is we're going to give you like 15 minutes um, to solve a challenge then the person who wrote that challenge is going to just hop on and uh, do a quick demo of how to solve it. Um, and then uh, we'll do the same thing again four times. 
we have three beginner challenges, all worth 10 points, and then one uh, difficult challenge, uh, which is worth uh, 80 to 100 points. Uh, we're not really sure. 100. 1,000 points. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> in my head, it's like a 70 point challenge. Well, yeah, in no your one has head. your head. Everyone yeah, exactly. says what your head is like. Um, can someone just confirm that they're seeing the challenges and they like actually have access to it? How this is um, up for me? Let me double check. Why? Can you use your little account that you just made right now and check because you yep. have it? Sounds good. Um, and then you can like guide people to. Sure. So if you click oh. on challenge, oh, okay. It's All right. So yet. yes, it's not up yet. It should be up. Let me double check to make sure that people can see challenges. Oh, it's on. Okay. Here we go. Public. Oh right, yes. mistake. Um, okay, yep, they're in. You can refresh the one. Yeah, so you can see you're gonna see uh, how to CTF night challenge, and you should also see request hell. Um, Kurt, I'm not seeing it on my screen. I'll double check again. Config the challenges. Request tell it does say visible. Does it have a prerequisite? Does not. Let me update it again just to make sure it's it got the update. Can you refresh? Yep. Yeah. Mm, nope. Okay. okay, let me solve this challenge and let's see if, if you that get it. reveals it. Yeah. Okay, so that's correct. No. Uh, that did not unlock it. Mm. This is good to know. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Let me, um, uh, let me try making it visible from this UI. I can push it again if you want. Yeah. If you push it, make sure that. Um, can you check the file to make sure it doesn't have any prerequisite prerequisites coming in? Yep, sounds good. Uh, can you uh, just delete it? Delete it from the platform, and I'll just yep. uh, deploy it. Um, so I'm going to have to stop sharing for a second. Sorry, everybody. Oh, disconnect. Just stop sharing. Yeah, <laughs> you no. go. I, I always <laughs> I like, please do that. I, I did that today. <laughs> See, it's, it After happens. I, um, it's, sorry, guys, just super quick. I just got a message about the CCR. We like briefly went over that today, um, like for today's meeting. Did oh. we already send the CTR? We did not. Um, okay. Actually, Jamie, can you throw that up while Luai's uh, troubleshooting? Like, we can take a five minute break, I guess, and throw up the CTR yeah. and while we're troubleshooting. Perfect. Let's do that. that makes sense. Um, let me yeah. send it to Jamie. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure the code is all the flags, right? Yeah, all lowercase. Um, I love how, you, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, if Jamie, if you could just like throw up a text file or something, it just says the CCR equals this. Hi, on it, El you. Presidente. Perfect, thank you. By the way, for the non-Sheridan students, this is a Sheridan student thing. Uh, just, it's, um, I keep forgetting what it stands for. Uh, Oh, do I do remember? Co-curricular record. record. There you go. Co-curricular yeah. record. It's just uh, yeah. If you want some extra little tidbits on your transcripts, um, for attending I sessions. The key is, in the stream, it is all the flags. Oh, sorry. We're no one streaming. Uh, yeah. I guess I'll just I'll just post it. It's fine. They can just check the YouTube stream. It's, um, yeah, yeah, I, I just it, it is in the letters Jim. on the YouTube as well. Massive. It's in a massive Visual Studio DS Code window. Yeah, I'm on my, I'm on my gaming computer, so I'm on Windows. That's why. I can't wait. Like that's I think of all the technologies, like 
that I'm excited for. I can't wait until something replaces DirectX and I can finally stop using Windows. Our request tell is up now. Perfect, yep. Nice. So I just pushed it. Um, yeah, we, we made a little change, which I guess um, broke something. So that's really good to know. See, this is why we're doing this. Remember, expect things to break. Yeah, so have fun, everybody. Let me see if the actual challenge works. OK, the actual challenge does work. Cool. So start solving it. Do you want to put a timer up? We'll do like a countdown from, I don't know, 10 minutes, ten minutes? five minutes? What do you want to do? I think 10 minutes is fine. Sure. Maybe you seven. want to throw one up, Jamie? Sure. I'll put it right beside Louie's watchful eyes. <laughs> he's watching He's watching you. I love you. I love you, Jamie, so much. You know what? I love you so much. Why? 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 Just look at the YouTube stream. <laughs> That's why. okay. That's okay. I have a. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kurt, did we say 15 minutes? What did we say? Sorry. Ten. Ten. Sorry, yeah, just ten. to make sure Luai sees this. Uh, can I address the comments about the challenge in the channel at the moment? Is that cool? Go oh. ahead, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm just going to say. Um, angry chicken that that error you posted that is not an error that is expected behavior for the challenge yeah I was also very shocked when I opened the challenge and it was just a blank white screen I was like oh I messed something up but nope that's the challenge Jamie, um, what's it called? This is throwback to when the picture you put of Luai, throwback to when he actually had hair. <laughs> That's... I have hair right now. Also, just so you know, Nick is trashing you in the chat right now. I just saw that. I think there's some beef. I'm disappointed. I'm kind of disappointed, but whatever. It's fine. It is what it is, man. This is pressure from Yusuf, you know. Oh. I did a couple, me and Jem did a couple of Nick's challenges, the begin, the very basic ones, and trust me, they're very easy. Like, you will be able to solve them. So, don't take this as an example, I guess. Yeah, this is non standard <laughs> for one of my challenges. Yeah. Do we have that timer up? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, I'm going to be proactive here and just redeploy the other challenges as well because it's probably going to be the same problem. Um, uh, are they still up on the platform, uh, Kurt? Or yeah, I'll, I'll delete them. Yeah, just just delete them. That way we start with a fresh slate. Make sure you don't delete request hell though. I also just want to try to put some things in perspective here. I'm seeing some people saying, you know, they're confused, they don't know what to do, um, this is hard. You know, when you come across a challenge that's difficult, 
or sometimes when they're not even supposed to be that difficult, don't expect to just solve it in 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, you know, during CyberSci, I think I, I said it at the, the presentation that we did with our team. Um, I think we spent like five, I spent five hours on one challenge. It was almost the entire event I spent um, on a single challenge. And, you know, that's fine. Basically is what I'm trying to say. It does happen. So don't, you know, luckily, luckily with this CTF, there's, so many challenges to choose from but don't don't feel bad if you you know hop on a challenge and first five minutes you don't solve it uh it's all part of the game so just just keep at it yeah one of our alumni thraki who does presentations he often tells a story about the first ctf he ever went to and basically spent the entire ctf like hours and hours and hours working on like one maybe two android reverse engineering challenges just because he found them so fun and so interesting and he learned a lot um and that's just as beneficial as scoring points right 100 percent, 100 absolutely i'm looking at the submissions i'm excited any submissions yeah. yet any correct submissions no no not yet not yet not yet come on we need to get at least one <laughs> No pressure. Don't give him pressure, man. <laughs> the only person okay. that should be pressured right now is you. Bro, I told I told you I finished last in the 2019 CTF. Like dead last. Like dead last on my team too. So it's okay. Don't worry. Just completely fine. So I'll You'll be name. fine. Yeah, exactly. That's why you're teaching people how to do them now, right? Because what's the what's the line? Those who can't do teach. Teach exactly. <laughs> you just had to you just had to go for the kidney shot there, right? Oh, dude, do you know how many times I've heard that line? It's fine. It's fine. True. All right. That's yeah, that's fair. Yeah, okay. Do we okay. forget okay. who's saying this? It's joke. a bit of a self burn. That's... It's okay. Oh uh, yeah, I just realized that. So it's... Don't worry. Don't worry, Rick. I got your joke and I found it. Very clever. Thank you. We've been at like a steady 120 people watching the entire time. Makes me happy. I was expecting only 60 people to show up. I know there are thirty teams we solving challenges. The shit out of this for you. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You guys want to see some stats? Let's do it. Show it. See some stats. Sure. Give me one sec. You got, you got three minutes and thirty seconds. Oh, that's enough. The stats are not very exciting right now. <laughs> But it's okay. We can we can show some cool stats. Uh, let's see. Screens. Um, the screen. Go live. Okay. So everybody should see uh, a Cabana instance here. Oh, well, I still have the time. Hopefully. Sure. Okay. Cool. Let Jamie stream it. Yeah. One sec. I gotta switch everything over for the way. Hold on. In there we go. There we go. Now we got the map going. Pardon, monsieur. Je suis malade. Okay. Stick to Arabic, please, so I can understand you. <laughs> and as a fictiria, Jamal. Okay. There we go. So, um, so uh, here's our game statistics dashboard. You can see that um, currently most of you are connecting from Canada. Some of you are probably using a VPN connecting from the US. We got some people from India, uh, maybe using a VPN, maybe not. Who knows? Um, if you're hailing from India, woohoo. Woo um, there are 30 teams uh, solving challenges right now uh, and 59 players in total. So clearly we have some team building to do. Okay. Um, over the last hour or so we've had two challenges solved uh but i'm not sure if like i solved one of them so we'll, I think we'll that see was me doing the hint one maybe yeah that, that accounts for one of them but i don't know what the second one is so we'll, we'll see um you can see here there's nothing exciting going on because we don't have enough um time to be able to show anything um 
it'll only show something once an hour has passed. So we'll have some cool stuff to show during the CTF. You can see that everybody's pretty much tied right now, right here, because everybody solved that free hint points challenge. Um, and yeah, that's probably all the excitement right now. Yeah, nothing exciting too much because there's only one challenge solved so far. Flag engine X, really? <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe we have to go over the flag format again. Correct submission. What is this? Cool. Let it be. People are trying. Yeah, people are trying. Hey, go crazy. Um, best part is that the infrastructure has not collapsed, so yay. Cool. Yeah, and uh, I believe probably the timer's up, so I'm going to uh, stop. Um, do we want uh, Nick to do his challenge demo now? Yeah, if, if is the time up? I Probably, Jamie's right? Jamie's time up? I, I would think so too, oh. yeah. Eight seconds to save oh, the world. Eight, set. eight Damn. seconds. Damn. First time I've been on time my whole life. <laughs> 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 now the timer is up. Uh, Rick, whenever <laughs> you're ready, take us away. Sure, thanks. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Um... Okay, uh, can you see that? Uh, yeah, I think just awesome. wait for Jamie to give you the go-ahead so that he's streaming. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. To you. You're so, live, yeah. very cool. Um, so again, uh, apologies, because uh, this is actually a pretty hard challenge, and I didn't realize it until after. Um, but hopefully this challenge is actually going to introduce you to a few really valuable techniques um, that will probably be helpful for other challenges. Um, this like I mentioned in the chat just now, would probably be like a 70 or 80 point challenge. But again, because everyone's getting a walkthrough right now, um, I guess it's like a free 10 points anyway. So yeah. Uh, Jamie, can I go? Yep, you're all good to go. Yep, you're all good to go. Awesome, okay, cool. Um, all right, so you probably noticed, obviously, in the um, the challenge that there's like a URL that you gotta go to to start this challenge, right? Which is requesthelp.ctf.isessions.ca and I click it um, and what? Uh, so I get error uh, 405. Um, if I were to start a incognito window, just to double check this, the first time I load the page, I actually don't get that error. It's only on subsequent loads that I get that error, which is kind of interesting. We might wonder why that is. Um, so one of the first things you might think is, well, I don't know, let me view the HTML page source. So I'm going to go and view that. There's nothing here. There's no actual content to this web page. Um, if you know a little bit more about some of the features that Chrome or Firefox have built in for examining the contents of web pages, I can maybe right click and go to inspect and look at some of the other details here. Um, so this is the first of, of some of the tools that might be useful for you. Uh, when you use the inspect capability inside um, modern browsers, you have stuff like access to a JavaScript console. You can look at the various files that make up this page. Um, a really interesting one is over here on this application tab. Um, you can see a bunch of data um, that might be stored as part of this uh, web page. Um, so you've got like HTML local storage and session storage. If you don't know what these are, that's cool. Um, it's not super common to know what those are. Um, but cookies are something that a few people have probably heard of. And if I look at the cookies that this page gave me, um, I've got one where the, uh, I was given a cookie called admin and its current value is set to no. That's kind of interesting. Um, maybe we could play around with that and, and see what happens. Um, but I don't like doing challenges like this through a web browser. Sometimes it can be a little bit clunky. I am more of a command line person myself. So if you've never pulled down or, or accessed a web page through the command line, um, in Linux, for example, there's a really, really great tool called curl, um, where I can say curl uh, request.ctf.isessions.ca. I probably made a typo. Uh, It's a uh, request hell. Oh, thank you. Yeah, request hell. 
My bad. Um, by the way, that's supposed to be a bit of a hint in the challenge title. Um, this might have something to do with HTTP requests. So, okay, I send a curl request and I get nothing. Normally when I would send a curl request, if I sent a curl request to like google.com, I would actually get some HTML content. Um, but I get nothing. Um, curl has a great option you can specify, which is dash V, meaning V verbose. Give me extra debug and logging output. So I hit that. And here's some, we see a bunch of like garbage. And if you're not used to looking at requests like this, um, get used to it because if you're going to be doing security, this is a, this is the world you live in. So um, to parse this apart, to understand and read some of it, we basically sent what's called a get request to uh, request uh, ctf sessions.ca um, using this HTTP method, version 1.1. Um, we're saying, hey, I'll accept any kind of answer the server gives to me. The server said, 200, okay, that means that's the server saying, yeah, I received your request, everything was cool, and I sent you back the appropriate response, which is nothing. But when I sent you that response, I also set a cookie for you that says admin equals no. So um, if you know a little bit about cookies, every time you make a request, you send all your cookies for that page um, back to the server. Um, so what if I sent it a request like this? Um, I'm gonna send some data, so I'm gonna say dash B, and I'm gonna say admin equals yes. Do I get anything when I do this? Um, I still don't see any like page content, but what I see is in the output, and again, I'm kind of speeding through this. I would expect this to take somebody a little while to sit and parse through and read, um, but for the sake of brevity, um, I see method not allowed. So then I might say, interesting, maybe you take this error message and you Google it, um, because that's the first thing all of us do when we have a problem, right? So if I Google um, something like that, maybe I get HTTP request methods, maybe I get um, the 405 error HTTP method. Um, so there's some documentation here you could read basically saying the HTTP method that I used, get, is not allowed. Um, okay, well what are other HTTP methods? Um, when you request a web page, you're actually allowed to request it a bunch of different ways. I can say get, or post, or put, or head. So what if I um, changed my request to a slightly different method. I can do that on the command line by saying dash capital X and then using one of these other words. It's like another way of asking for a page. So maybe I'll try, I don't know, I'll try put. I still get 405 method not allowed. Okay. Um, if you've been looking at web content for a little while, other than get, you probably might know that the most common type of request is a post. This is when you fill out a form on a web page and you submit it, um, it would send a post request. So I enter that. Did anything change? Uh, so I send admin equals yes. Ah, the error message changed. Now it said 406 not acceptable. So the server allowed me to issue um, this kind of request. It said, yeah, you, you entered, you used the right HTTP method, you, you said the right words, but the data you sent or the way you sent it was incorrect. You would get that information if you Googled what a 406 not acceptable means. And again, during the actual contest, you might take a few minutes to read this documentation from either Mozilla or any other source about this error message. And eventually you would stumble, stumble across the concept of content negotiation. So when I talk to a web page, I say, I'm gonna send you requests with data in this format, I'm willing to accept all these other formats as a valid response. Um, I just went ahead and Googled, okay, what are the most common ways that I could send requests or receive requests and, and what kinds of content would I allow in HTTP? And the first like Stack Overflow answer that came up when I Googled it was, was this thread right here where this person saying, yeah, the most common types of content that you can do with HTTP are the following ones. Okay. And again, um, at this point, it would, might just be a simple matter of trying all these values and seeing what works. Um, so maybe I could say, okay, so I'm going to send you a post request, and I'm going to tell you that the way I'm going to send you, I'm just, uh, the way I'm going to send you content, uh, which I can say dash eight, I can say content type, uh, maybe I'm going to pretend that I'm actually submitting a web form. And when I would do that, the content type would be application, blah, 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 blah. And again, I would just copy and paste all this from a website. Uh, no, still not acceptable. 
maybe if I work my way through this list and I try sending all of these, eventually I would get one that would work. Okay, well, what if I eventually try application JSON? So finally, I sent admin equals yes. I sent it a post request and I said, hey, I'm willing to, I'm, I'm sending you JSON or I'm willing to accept JSON um, as a valid form of response from the server. I get HTTP 200, meaning the server was like, yeah, cool, awesome, I liked your request. Um, here's some resulting data. Um, and in that, we, we ended up finding a flag. So that was a bit involved. Um, I would expect that this challenge would take somebody a little a little while because it basically involves you reading the HTTP 405 error page and the 406 error page, and then just doing some guessing with some of the content of the requests. So this would probably be a more intermediate level challenge just because of the amount of work. But um, I was hoping through that you might you know see, hey look we Googled some some error messages. Uh, we looked at using like the view page source or inspect element components inside Chrome or Firefox so we can view the stuff behind the curtain and also that we can actually um, talk to web servers using the command line with a tool like curl and how we can specify different values um, using curl. Um, and that's uh, that kind of stuff is probably solve a lot of challenges for you. That's it. Was that? Yep. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Nick. No problem. Um, anybody have any questions about the specific challenge? And yeah, right, just... I pre I pre googled all that stuff uh, again just because I didn't want to like, you know, make typos. No, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and to I just be think fair, like... if I was like, I this would take me probably like a half an hour, forty five minutes, um, if I was just approaching this problem blind. So again. Um, just to give you an idea that, yeah, it would take a long time. We have a lot of people typing, so I'm wondering. Her? I'll give the message. Yep. Um, I think it's just super important to note that, like, because uh, a couple people and you guys all answered them, um, but like that this is not a representation of like what a 10 point challenge actually would look like. Um, Trust me, I did a, a couple of Nick's challenges and a bunch of other 10 point challenges. They are not this difficult. Um, again, this was just to kind of show you um, a challenge, plus the walkthrough and stuff like that. Um, but no, most 10 point challenges, if not all, are gonna be significantly easier than this. It's definitely, it's definitely not representative of 10 point challenges, but I just wanna point out how realistic the, the process is, right? Maybe you can, for the 10 point challenges, the process would be a little bit more reduced, it would be a bit more cut down, but think about how many times Rick, you know, would look at the result and then go and research on that. Look at the result and then go and research on that. If you look at the survival kit, the first section of the survival kit is talking about the importance of Googling, right? It, it, this is information security. There is no skill, no technical skill um, that can compare to your ability to research and learn something on the fly. So. Um, uh, yeah, you're right, Yusuf. It's not reflective of a, of an average ten point challenge, but man, is that process realistic? Um, that that really paints a picture. So keep that no, in mind. No, hundred percent. I agree. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, yeah. Don't expect. I think I saw Kevin uh, said this would take him hours to to get the proper answer. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you're going to be learning a lot during the CTF. The objective, like I said before many times, is not to come in first or second or tenth. The objective is to learn as much as you can, right? We're not doing CTFs for a living. We're doing CTFs for fun and to learn, right? Don't forget that. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Yusuf. Good points. Um, thanks, Nick, too. Um, you had a question. Uh, sorry, one second. There was a question. Uh, can, can this be solved using Chrome Inspect Element? Like, can you just do everything that you did, Nick, within, like, the browser rather than the terminal? You could do some of it, and Threkir you know, looks like he's answering that in chat. Um, some of it you can do, uh, but doing stuff like manipulating all of those header values would be pretty challenging, even if you were using like the console to send JS requests and stuff. Honestly, like um, command line tools or through something like Burp Suite, where you can really intercept and manipulate and look at all the contents of an HTTP request, those would be the best tools for something like this. Yeah, that's a good point. The burp suit comes back. <laughs> oh, stop talking about burp suit. Some people were saying <laughs> stuff like Postman. Uh, yeah, Postman would probably work because I think you, with Postman, 
um, which is a web application for sending requests. I'm pretty sure you can specify um, like content type uh, in Postman. Yeah, yeah, Nick, that's what I used to actually do yeah. to do it. Um, it's it's just kind of a weird interface to be honest. Your your like your yeah. solution there just was like way cleaner. Like I'm I'm jealous. <laughs> Nice. I, fair, but I also wrote the challenge, so I know how to <laughs> yeah, fair. Screen up, did we get any solves? Let's see. Checking Zero out. Zero solves. Okay. Yeah. No worries. I, this one is a little bit tricky. Um, I'll give you that. But uh, it's also, you know, understanding how the flag format works is kind of a a good hint to how to solve this challenge. Um, Jamie, let me know when you're good. Beautiful, thank you. OK. Um, I don't know what you would call it. I don't know, it's like we have it in cryptography, but it's it's more, I guess, yeah, it could be steganography. It could be, it's, it's a weird, not a very defined category for this one. Um, okay, so checkmate in three. So the, the hint, I guess not the hint, but the name of the challenge is a fairly uh, good hint. So um, the way I, I thought of this was um, if you understand the flag format, which is hexadecimal, which means one, two, F, and then there's 10 of those, right? Sorry, uh, 10 pair, or, sorry, 10 characters, uh, five pairs of two, if you would. Um, so if you think about it, when I move a piece, say rook to uh, a1, oh, actually, oof, this might actually be confusing with this board because it might go 1a. OK, so if I were to do this again, I would put two flags that are kind of off that, that uh, would say like 1a instead of a1. But for, for this purposes, I'll keep it uh, what the flags are currently. So if I were to move rook to a1, um, I would think of that as a uh, like a first part of the flag because it fits within the bounds of uh, hexadecimal, what the flag can be, right? So if we're looking for a checkmate in three, what what moves could we do to create a flag? Um, so there are a couple ways to do this. If you know chess, you could uh, find it that way. If you don't know chess, which is actually how I made this challenge, I know chess, but like I don't, I'm not a chess master who can just see things. So basically. Um, here is a, uh, a website called Lee Chess, which is just a tool for um, brute forcing chess moves. Um, and how do I, where's my analysis? Okay, um, I believe it is. Jem, you're the expert on this. Is it this button? Just click the toggle button beside, uh, on the top right corner where it says Stockfish 13. Click that toggle. Yeah, and that'll kind of show you the, That's the engine okay. moves. Awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find Checkmate in 3 because it is the uh, fastest moves. Okay, so. Rook to a1. Um, the next move, the only place that black can go, he can't go, um, he can't move down here. The rook is attacking. He can't, black king cannot move here. The uh, knight is attacking. So um, black king to b1, b8. Sorry, uh, b8, yes. Um, next move, uh, let's see what this says. It says it can go, I believe, over here. So that would be king to d6, black king to c8 and then rook to a8 and that is checkmate um if you do this line of moves the black black king can only go one direction so you force the um you're uh by the way w you are allowed to spit the flag after i explain it so it's fine uh so yeah i'm forcing this line of moves there are other ways to get checkmate in three and i did include those flags as well um but this is the uh stockfish chess um chess engine approved way. So let's, I'm going to go through the flag and I'm going to actually type it in. So let me pull it up. Uh, OK. So the first move was rook to a1. Whoops. Pull that back up. So remember flag format, a1. Uh, black king to b8, uh, b8. Yeah, the numbers, sorry, I apologize, Jamie. Yeah, because I, for whatever reason, I used a different board with the numbers on the side. Um, so if I were to do this again, I would add uh, double the two flags that go either way. But uh, 
for some reason I missed that. So white king to what was that? D six. D six, and then it would be black king to C eight. C eight. Uh, white rook to A eight. A eight. I hope this works. Yes. Okay. There you go. Um. Yeah, and that would be the flag. So that's just kind of like a a steganography crypto kind of weird challenge. It's not uh, specifically. It's an it's it's a more um, interesting challenge. It's not. Uh, sorry, interesting is a bad word. It's a more different type of challenge that's uh, you might find in as you're going through the CTF. Um, Connor says, I think we, they will specify if we need to use SHA-256. Yeah, you don't need a SHA-256, all the flags. Only the ones that we specify, when we will clearly state them if they need to be um, hashed. Um, abstract, yes, Jess, this is a more abstract challenge. You might find a few of them. Actually, you are going to find a few abstract challenges throughout the um, CTF. Um, if you don't like abstract challenges, you don't have to do them. Um, but I, I, I enjoy real kind of interesting challenges like this. So I decided to make something kind of like this. Um, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Any questions before we move on to the next challenge? I didn't see the king move. Oh, because you, were, you weren't using engine, right? There actually are more chat. Um, spoiler alert: there are more chess challenges. I didn't make them, and they seemed much more difficult, to be honest. Minbaki asks: So this challenge, we type the flag. Yes, you would be um, kind of piecing together the flag because. Um, yeah, you, you, you kind of have to do some interesting thinking to try to get it. Uh, also, to, to add to that, I don't know if you mentioned this, Kurt, but this is one of those challenges where there are actually like multiple possibilities. So there could be multiple flags that would be valid. Yeah. Um, so like, just... yeah, if I went through this line, this is also, uh, oops. Um, so this is also a checkmate in three, and uh, it's a different type of moves. And I added that one as well. The only thing I didn't add was the the numbers on the left side, which my, uh, a lot of people are confused. So I apologize for that. I think there are the numbers on the left side. If people do use uh, an engine, um, obviously all the moves that it lists out, it's in the proper format. And I mean, a little bit of Googling as far as um, chess notation goes, you'll find that the, uh, the standard algebraic notation is letter first. But um, I think you could even include something like that in the hint. I feel like that could be part of like the challenge. You know, is it number first, letter first? Let me quickly do a Google, that kind of thing. Um, up to you, obviously, but just something I was thinking about. Yep, for sure. Cool. OK, thanks, guys. Thank you, Kurt. Um, OK, so next up is God going to be, oh, sorry. God damn it, I disconnected. <laughs> See, it's a thing. It's a it's thing, right? right? It's totally yeah. not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, next up is going to be uh, Yusuf, our webmaster. He wrote a challenge called Lue, the Saboteur. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, excited for this challenge because it has my name on it, and uh, I haven't solved it yet. So let's see what actually happens when you solve this challenge. Um, Kurt, uh, are you going to be releasing the challenge? Oh, oh, it's released. Oh, cool. Perfect. So just a note here, uh, if you do the challenge correctly, um, there are two ways of doing it. Um, and both ways are in the flag. So there are two possible flags. Um, yeah. So do whatever you think is necessary. Uh, yeah. I think anyone um, who did any forensics course, like the first forensics course, should be able to solve this challenge. It's fairly simple. Um, that in itself should be a hint right off the bat. Thank you. 
Um, and by the way, I just I just want to mention if you like have questions about doing something one way versus another way, and sometimes you know there's like two or three different ways of doing the challenge. That's a very valid question for a mentor, right? So if you open a ticket and you get a mentor to you know start talking to you. Um, in your, you know, dedicated sort of uh, Discord uh, category or room or whatever you want to call it, you can ask them, like, I'm thinking about it this way and I'm also thinking about it this way. And maybe they can tell you, actually, both of those ways could work. Or maybe this way, you know what, I would stay off this way. I would try to pursue this a little bit more. Those are all okay um, um, things to ask from a mentor for sure. They just will not give you the answer out. So I was just troubleshooting a problem with Mr. Shadow. So I'm just going to talk about that for a little bit, just in case you are experiencing the same problem. Um, so sometimes if you've you know had the website open for a very long time, uh, you know maybe like the cookie is stale or something like that, and you sort of lose your login, um, or maybe you know you just haven't refreshed the browser in a very long time. That can cause issues. So um, what? Uh, 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 the problem that they were having uh, seemed to be, you know, they, they could log in, no problem, on one system. On a different system, it seems like they were getting some sort of error. Um, so uh, some, you know, troubleshooting tips before you ask a mentor is try, you know, refreshing your browser, try refreshing the website. Um, try, uh, like, if you think it's a password issue, try resetting your password. Um, so just, just so, you know, you can sort of, self troubleshoot before you involve you know uh, the big guns thank you mr shadow for um giving us that little piece of knowledge there and i'm really happy to see so many of you still here solving challenges Fun fact, we added 10 users just in the last hour or so. So everybody seems to have been very excited for this meeting. That's very good to see. That's awesome. That is fantastic. I love your fun fact. <laughs> Thanks. I'm trying to do the radio host thing. I don't know if I'm succeeding. You're not. Thanks. You are. I'm joking. You definitely once again, are. Once again, Lue is the butt of all jokes. This is no. It's just for me. It just comes for me. It's it's the, it's. You're usually everyone usually right. likes you. Makes sense. I'm really hoping someone solves this challenge. Uh, Jimmy, what are we at in terms of time? No timer. I don't know if you set one up. No worries, all good. Oh, was that a seven minute timer or was that a 10 minute timer? Cool. <laughs> You're good, man. You're good. You're good. Just something to note if you don't have a team already. Um, if you're going to be posting in the CTF looking for a group, 
um, I would highly recommend that you maybe mention your year. Um, that might help people. So like if like two third years are in a team and they maybe want to get together with like a couple first years or a second year, um, they might be looking for that. Vice versa as well. If two first years are in a team and then you also have like two third or fourth years in a team, um, they might look to merge. So maybe just think about that when you are posting in that. Um, yeah, I'm also really happy. Like it's been, I think, super successful. There's a lot of people who post in it looking for a team. So that was a great idea by you, Kurt. I think it was Kurt's idea. Was the exact team idea? Kurt is the source of all good ideas. Jem, Yusuf, Jamie, they all have terrible ideas. I was I was like waiting for you to say they all come up with great ideas and then you just like <laughs> derailed it heavily. I was I was more so just trying to not mention myself and then uh, create suspense. Uh okay. All right. All right. All right, Mr. Luai. So, any good jokes, anyone? I think um, I think Kurt needs to tell his joke. <laughs> the one I saw on Reddit. <laughs> I think you should say that joke. That was a funny joke. I laughed at it. I was in the washroom and I laughed at it. Oh man, how does it even go? Did you guys hear about the robbers stealing all the tires off police cars? Did not. But what happened? No. The police are working tirelessly to find him. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's a good joke. It's a really good joke, man. It's good. Alrighty, we got 50 seconds. Come on, people. Give me a solve. Ah, come on, Jamie. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. I will start sharing my screen. Just let me know when I'm good to go. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, okay, cool. So if you've looked at the challenge, um, it's called Luai the Saboteur. I didn't name it that way. Uh, I actually named it something else. And then Luai decided to change it. Probably didn't think my grammar was good, but uh, that's a very Luai thing to do. Anyways, um, so, oh no, we've made ISS as Vice President Luai Abud very, very angry. In return, he has been doing everything in his ability to sabotage the CTF. It's gotten to the point where he is sabotaging challenges. We've been able to fix all of them except this one. Can you give us a hand? Okay, I just want to make it very clear. This is obviously a joke. Um, Luai and everyone else on the exec team, Jamie, Jem, Nash, uh, Kurt, myself, we all work super duper hard. Um, no one would ever actually do this. Uh, this was just a joke. Um, I like. I don't know. For, for for two years, I've actually had a secret plan to sabotage the CTF. Yes, with all the hard work that you do, uh, that makes so much sense. Um, cool. So if you were paying attention to what Luai kind of said at the beginning, um, if a challenge specif specif specifies that you need to do something to generate the flag, um, it'll say. So in this uh, example. Um, here, you're not echoing the result. You're just uh, getting the hash of the actual file that you uh, come up with. Um, so it says generate the generate the flag by generating the SHA-256 sum of the file after you undo the damage, then enclosing the first 10 digits of the hash with flag to do this on the Linux command line. There you go. Um, cool. So once you download the, um, the challenge, you get the zip file. Um, if you unzip the file, so we can go unzip UI food and the LS, we have it. 
Um, we don't see that anything interesting about the file. Um, yeah, so there's no actual file extension. It's just a file um, here. So based off, I guess, the, the title of the challenge, you would know that um, there's something wrong with this file. Um, so I would probably go like Google, hey, how do you corrupt a file, right? Because in high school, we all did that. We corrupted files. Um, and you would go through something and you would find something like this that tells you to use like a file corruptor, but then you would go all the way, you would keep scrolling and then you would see that um, in essence, when you corrupt the file, you are just playing with the actual contents of the file, um, whether that be the hex contents or it in binary. Um, so that's what this person here is doing. They just uh, erased a bunch of stuff within the actual contents of the file itself inside the header. Um, inside the actual file um, and that prevents it from being opened. So from there, I think uh, if you did a little bit of research on that, or if you went to like any um, forensics class, you would know that there's a way of doing that. Um, so what I can do, um, the file is, I know this because I made the challenge, it's very large, not very large, but I don't wanna uh, dump all the uh, files. So I'll just do hex dump um, of the actual file. And I'll type that into like head for now. We'll look at the top. Um, and then I guess you could look at this and you'd be like, ah, oh, this doesn't really mean anything to me. I just see a bunch of hex digits. Um, I don't know what's up. Um, I guess this is where maybe uh, you look at the hint. So if you looked at the hint, um, you would go like cat uh, hint. Okay, it says some file types have something called the trailer. Have you tried locating the trailer of this file? Um, so maybe then you Google something like file signatures and trailers. Um, and then you get this link, which is a phenomenal link for a challenge like this. Um, you also get this link in one of the forensics classes. Um, cool. So some this, files have uh, headers and trailers. So you would look at this and you would look right here at the very beginning and you would see that there's a bunch of zeros. Now, most files do not have that. If you scroll through this, uh, most of the files actually start with something, right? They could start with a zero, zero, but then there's actual um, characters after it. So what, whatever the file type may actually be, um, you would have to locate, you would have to find it out. Now the hint says there's something called a trailer. So the trailer kind of hints at the fact that it's at the end of the file. So we could do the same thing. Um, and instead of uh, doing head, we can do tail. Let me actually just clear my screen and do that one more time. So we can do tail. Um, and then we can see that the last uh, couple of bytes are 3B00. Now, when I first did this, the, the trailer was actually 003B, um, but it doesn't matter, this will still help us. So in this actual uh, web page right here, uh, you can uh, control F and just do literally 3B. Um, and you can find that right here, this file B85, um, the header of the file contains a 3B we're looking at the trailer. So we know that that's not what we're looking for. One other enter, and then you will find that uh, GIFs actually end in 003B or 3B, um, which is good because that helps us. So now that we know, we can assume with high confidence that this is in fact a GIF. Um, so we need to fix the header. So if I go back and I do head again, we can see that all of these are zeros. And the file format for a GIF is actually either this or this. So GIF 89A or 87A. This is where I went uh, and said, uh, you could do either one of these and you would get the correct flag. Uh, obviously it would generate two separate flags. So they'd be two different flags. Um, you would just need to submit one of them. So Yusuf, how do you edit hex? You can do it with um, within your browser. Like you can just search up like an online hex editor or you can actually go through, um, uh, if you have a Kali machine, this uh, app called Hex Editor comes pre-installed. Um, editor comes pre-installed. Uh, all you have to do is just run it and then supply it with the file that you want to use. So I'm using UI sabotaging mess. Okay. Um, segmentation fault. What the heck? Maybe it doesn't like how small my screen is or how big it is. Sorry. I've never gotten this. Perfect. There we go. Uh, let me see if I can make that bigger. Yeah. So uh, I can see now that I can actually edit the hex data and I have the zeros at the top. Can someone just tell me, is this uh, big enough? 
or should I make it a little bit bigger? Am I good? I'm gonna assume that I'm good. I don't like that. You're you're great, Yusuf. Okay, awesome, thanks. Um, so yeah, so we would replace these zeros with the actual um, file headers that we found here, um, which is 47. So let's do that. So we'll go 47, uh, 49, 47, 49, 46. That's not a 46, 46, uh, 38, 37, 38, 37, and then 61. Okay, uh, this 37 could be a 37, could be a 39, doesn't really matter. You'll still get the correct result. Um, so then you want to save it. So Control O, it'll ask you uh, what to save the file to. Um, I'll just put a .gif extension so that I know that it's a GIF. But you, again, do not have to do that. The header of the file actually tells your operating system how to deal with that, not this extension. So um, I'll press Enter, Control X to close this. Quick LS. Um, weird. I don't know why it came out that way. Weird, whatever. Um, but now I have this GIF. So let's go see if it actually worked. Um, so poor, perfect. There's this GIF right here. Let's click it. Um, and we have a GIF that is doing something. Oh, look at that. It's printing. You did it. Um, and it's just printing. You did it a bunch of times. And Luai is saying, I'm so sick of this nonsense. <laughs> oh <my> so God. <laughs> challenge worked. Um, solved it. So now the actual part of the to get the flag is we got to do the sum, right? The uh, hashing. So we can just go open up our terminal, cd desktop, and then we would go sha two five six sum. We'll give it the file. So lui sabotaging mess dot gif because that's the correct file that we just changed. And then we'll type that into make it bigger cut dash b. Well, let me just show you what this does first. Obviously, this generates a really big hash. Um, we don't need that. We need the first 10 characters, just like the instruction said. So we'll do cut dash b one to ten. Uh, you get this. So you copy that. You go into your uh, your what's it called? CTFD, the minute, so flag in all caps, paste what we got, and then submit. And you get incorrect. That's great. I don't think I saved the flag from before. Ah. Uh, oh, it's because uh, I, I redeployed it, and these are oh, not in the Right. Though. Right. Yeah. I should have known that. My apologies. Uh, I can quickly. So basically, like I said, um, it's a good thing that I mentioned this. Um, there's two different uh, file headers. There's this one and this one. So if you did it with the 39, you would have got the correct answer. Uh, let me just show you that really quickly. Why uh, sabotaging mess? So that would be what is it? Uh, 47, 49, 46, 38, 39, and 61. Control O dot GIF. We'll call this actually one dot GIF. Control X. Same command. Dot one though. This actually doesn't look right to me. I think I might have messed something up uh, in the header. I don't know if I wrote it right. Yusuf. Yeah. Yeah, that, that won't work because you. Uh, oh. It worked. There we oh, go. it worked. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. I guess the um, file that name was the original. Matter. That was the yeah. The file name doesn't matter, right? Um, it's only in the header. Um, but yeah. So there, submitted. Uh, you got it right. So my apologies. I should have fixed that flag. I knew that Lou. I was redeploying it. I just completely forgot. But yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions, please ask. God. Yeah. Why? Right. So you... Right. Right. 
So that's a great question. Um, no, no, no. This is generating it. This is generating the entire uh, the GIF. So what I was in, like when I this is the correct way to actually uh, get the hash of a file. Um, it's hashing the entire file. Um, maybe I should have made that very clear that you're not actually hashing the header. I meant to hash the image. Um, in the instructions, what I put was I said at instructions um, SHA sum and then literally put the file. So, <laughs> no, 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 that's very fair. Very fair. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, but but honestly, it, it's good that this happened because that would be another thing that you can ask a mentor, right? So, yeah. if you know you're sure, like a hundred percent, you're doing the right thing, but just something doesn't add up. Maybe there's just this little tiny thing that is that is stopping you. Uh, maybe it's something that we forgot to do, right? Um, so, really good question to ask. Uh, you'll Absolutely. get a push in the right direction. So, Jamie, technically, you did solve the challenge. You got the gift, so it's all good. I'm happy. Let me just put. I'm just gonna. Right. Awesome. Luai, how do you feel about this GIF? Oh, I, I love it. I love it. You this love is it? the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to let you bully me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take it okay. gracefully, buddy. All right, buddy. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. um, thank you so much, Yusuf. Uh, okay. Next challenge up is called the Keyring Automator. Uh, sorry, the Keyring Automaton. Good luck, um, everyone. So I wrote this challenge. Um, has it, has it been released, uh, Kurt, or do we still need to release it? We'll release it now. Perfect. So you're going to have to use SSH for this challenge. Um, once you are able to successfully SSH and log in using the instructions, please just give us a thumbs up in the chat. Uh, Pablo, if you get something like that on Image Magic, it means that the it means that you probably put the wrong byte in, so the the file is likely still corrupted. I'm going to link the uh, thing that I was looking at with all the file headers because it's uh, honestly amazing, um, and uh, yeah, so you'll have it there. I'm also seeing. Um, a question from Shakar. I don't really understand your question though. The trailer of the GIF and the trailer of GIF ends in three B, but that file did not. Why? So, okay, no, I get it now. So, um, basically, when I first made the challenge, I like I said, I I looked at it in a browser, and it did end in zero zero three B. I think it's just something um in the what's it called in um I don't know maybe the hex editor or something like that or something changed when I was zipping it. Um, that changed that, but um, the fact that it ends in uh, uh, zero in three B, I think, is sufficient. I'm not. I'm not quite sure to be completely honest with you, um, but yeah, the GIF worked and we opened it, so clearly something went right. Some possum. That reminded me of the video Kurt sent to us that one time. That video was hilarious. See, see the, the problem with saying that is that now 
we have everyone's to, like what is this video exactly and I, I don't know like is that a... are they ready? <laughs> I, I, well I, I don't actually know what video you're talking about so wow okay kurt why doesn't watch the videos you sent us he doesn't like you um it wasn't for him <laughs> there you okay go. fair enough pretty sure he was the one who said awesome awesome but okay Sorry, by the way, everyone, for keeping you for so long, but hopefully you're having fun. Okay, great question. Uh, Apocalypto, are these Python scripts supposed to give errors? Um, everything that you experience inside of a sysadmin challenge, like especially if it's related to permissions or something just doesn't work, or you can't edit a file, or you can't move a file, or you can't copy a file, all that stuff is intended. Because you are actually all sharing, um, well, not all of you, technically, but there are multiple replicas, basically, of this, of this challenge right now. And some of you are in one replica, some of you are in another replica. Um, and uh, you're sharing that host. So the, the challenges are actually read-only. Uh, meaning that you, you really can't change anything um, that is there. What you can do, though, if you want, is you can write your own uh, scripts. Um, so you can uh, certainly create files uh, if you know the directory you're in allows you to. Um, and uh, if it doesn't, of course, you can't. You just, just go to your home directory. You should almost always be able to create files in your home directory uh, and write a little script. Uh, one important thing to mention here, actually, is that um, because you're sharing this sort of pod, right? You're, you're sharing this instance of the challenge. If you write a script and you leave that script there, it means that somebody else can take a look at it. So make sure that you are, I guess, practicing good OPSEC operational security. So make sure that whatever work you do, you're hiding your tracks. Now I've helped you out a little bit. I'm gonna, I basically just delete history for all users every minute so that nobody can look at the history of what someone else did. Uh, but that's pretty much as much help as I can give you. Um, and, and I'll probably be resetting the challenges like every two hours or so, uh, just, just so you know, um, just to, to keep them fresh and to make sure that uh, they're still working okay. Oh, it looks like we have another problem with the YouTube stream. Windows noises. You mean like Windows notification noises or like someone closing and opening a window? <laughs> I love JB so much. It's like managing the stream, but like, no, I got to. I gotta solve these challenges. Oh, oh, trust me, this challenge, you think you're getting somewhere, you're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I want you to solve it. You know, the, the, the hard thing about like challenge development is that Something that is very obvious to you is not obvious to the person doing your challenge most of the time. So you're like, oh, surely they will do this first, but then you watch them do it and, and that's like, they never even thought of that. And you're like, okay, well, they're just gonna play around for two hours and then get nowhere. Um, when he says them, he's referring to me and Nash and Jem. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, it's not, it's okay. It, it, it's it's one of those challenges where it's uh, you know you can you can get stuck in some uh, what's the word? Uh, 
This is the hardest CTF challenge I've ever seen in my entire life. By far. No, it's no, it's not. Come on. Okay, what it's this is an easy challenge. You just need to do some basic things. Not an easy challenge, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What's that saying, guys? Uh, fake it till you make it. Why is like faking that this challenge is easy till people actually start thinking it's easy? I'm I'm definitely in that phase. You know, the leather jacket, the <laughs> oh, slay okay, man. Slay. All right, okay, all right. <laughs> that can't become a thing. That just simply cannot become a thing. It's okay, Yusuf. I love you. Love you too, I guess. <laughs> okay then. All right. <laughs> I love how this turned into a rom rom com. Literally, right? <laughs> how much uh, time do I have, Jamie? Cool. I can't wait to see like actually how you solving this, like describing, because I remember you, you explained it to me, but I kind of want to see you like actually physically do it. So I'm excited to see that. Cool. I didn't really practice the, uh, the walkthrough, so we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Rookie mistake, I agree. <laughs> I goofed up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's to be honest, every time I don't practice a presentation, I almost I always end up regretting it. It's important. Ten whoa, whoa, we went through three minutes to ten seconds. I love you, JV. <laughs> Oh, Jamie. Keep going. Computer time. Hmm. So far, the platform. Go ahead, Jamie. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, no. You go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, I use the Windows noise to sabotage you? <laughs> okay. I'm part of a lot of conspiracy theories today. Sabotaging the CTF, hacking into Jamie's machine and playing Windows noises. Unbelievable, man. Oh, okay. For sure. For sure. Sounds good. So um, let me share my screen. OK, uh, Jamie, once you're ready, let me know. Cool. Um, oh, I see. OK, so I think somebody solved it. Uh, IBBS, did you, did you solve the challenge? No, there's no way. Like, there's simply no way. Okay. I got so Okay, good, good, good. No, that's awesome. Um, perfect. Uh, okay, let's, let me actually connect first, and then I'm going to ask everybody a question. So I think the port was, so this is how you SSH, by the way, if you are, you know, a first year, a beginner. So you need to provide, using the dash P option, the port number. Sorry, um, Lloyd, do you mind just yep. blowing it up just a tad? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Zoom in. Zoom in. Is that better? That is perfect. Thank you. Cool. Um, all right. So, uh, so that's the port number thirty nine ten, and then the user that I gave you was called Automaton, and then the host name is uh, challenges .ctf .is sessions .ca. So as soon as I click this, uh, I get a password prompt, and then the password is also Automaton. Right. So I put in the password, and I am now in the challenge. Okay. So one thing to note, 
uh, right away, right? Whenever you're doing a sysadmin challenge, uh, you have a header here. So um, you can see here, this is a Debian Linux machine. So good to know, right? Uh, good information. You have like a version number here. I'm not really sure what this version number refers to. Uh, it might be the kernel. Okay. So good things to, to keep in mind. Uh, Whenever, whenever you're doing something like this, you want to learn about your environment as much as possible, right? So one thing that I typically, you know, want to do first when I get onto a box, right, is I want to do some some very light reconnaissance. Um, again, this, again, this is I just want to make this very clear. This is not like a red teaming challenge. This is sysadmin, okay? Um, however, some of the same things that you might do in like a like a red teaming or like a pen testing thing uh, may may apply here as well. Okay, um, so first, maybe I want to check all the processes that are running. So uh, I see a whole bunch of SSH processes. So this is everybody that is in the, in the challenge right now. I see there's the supervisor D process. Okay, I see cron is running. I see syslog is running. So we have uh, some sort of logging happening on two fronts and maybe some scheduled tasks. Um, and uh, again, SSHD, so this is the, the actual server that's running there, okay? And this is all of you. All right, so uh, nothing really interesting there. Like, I don't see any programs that sort of stand out. Um, maybe something uh, that we might want to do is uh, check the environment variables. So maybe there's there's something there interesting to, to take a look at. So we see users automaton. I see my, my you know, client uh, IP address. Uh, I see the current shell. Um, one thing you could do here is maybe do an env and then grep for something like, I don't know, pass or something like flag or flag, right? Um, but you know what? Noth nothing's coming back. Uh, there's nothing really interesting there. Another thing that I might do is I want to check what do I have in my current directory, right? So uh, I can list what's in the current directory. And here I have the dash A and the dash L option um, in order to give me kind of like a nice output and to show hidden files as well, right? I see some of you have created a whole bunch of uh, random things there. Uh, so this is what I mean about, you know, you have to kind of delete uh, your, your you know, hide your tracks. Of course, I will, you know, reset the challenge every once in a while. But stuff that was there sort of when you logged in, you've probably noticed. <laughs> hey, there you go. Uh, somebody's walling me. Um, so you can send messages for each other. That's very dangerous knowledge. Um, so what you're going to see is there's this automation scripts directory. OK, that's that's interesting. Um, another thing that you see here is that you see there's a dot hash and there's a dot local. Okay. Now, okay, so we've, we've done, you know, some, some kind of reconnaissance, and now we want to sort of dig a little bit um, deeper, right? Obviously, there was a lot more stuff that I could have look, looked into, right? So I could have looked at um, what users are currently on the system, right? So I could have catted the password file, right? So automaton, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Sadness. Um, another thing that you could have uh, looked at is what groups are you a member of? So checking permissions, that sort of thing is, is good. If we actually, again, um, list everything out here, um, you can see that uh, the directory automation script is actually owned by root, but I'm a member of the group and I have read and execute permissions. It means that I can actually go inside this directory and list the contents of this directory. Okay, So you know, I, I, I went in there and I see there's this whole, a whole bunch of automation scripts. So let's take a look at just any random one of them. And we see that they are fairly long, right? I mean, you've noticed like there's just a lot of code, OK? Obviously, in challenges, usually, OK, unless it's like a, like a reversing challenge, maybe, you're not expected to just sit there and read like eight or nine different scripts, OK? That's, that's not really the goal. Again, your, the goal that you have in mind is that you want to find that flag. Now, for me, at least for my challenges, I always like to leave like a little hint sort of in the, in the, um, in the title of the challenge, um, much like uh, Nick did. So you see here, the challenge is called the keyring automaton. OK, um, what is a keyring, right? And then the instructions say, can you find the password of all passwords? So whenever you hear a password of all passwords, you should think like password vault maybe, 
some, something along those lines. Um, and because we're looking for a password, well, why don't we just like release like a quick find command into our current directory uh, and see if we can find something that is related to a password or maybe related to a key ring in this directory. So I'm just gonna do like a general search before I start digging like, uh, you know, deeper. So uh, let's see, um, for f in the current directory, right? Uh, so for the files here, I'm going to go echo, or sorry, not echo, I'm going to do, I want to grep for, um, let's see, uh, I'm going to grep for pass, right, and then done. And if I go through this, uh, oh, I think something's wrong. One second, what am I doing wrong? Okay, you know what, this is what I get for trying to be quick. So let's echo $F and see if that works. Okay, that's good. So now let's grep, oh. I don't think I ever passed the dollar F. Okay, so I'm gonna grab for maybe pass, right, in dollar F. Oh, look at that. I found something related to a password, right? So um, we can also pass the dash H flag to grep here in order to find out which file that is. So right now my search space, right, the stuff that I have to go through has narrowly got gotten smaller, right? So here you can see uh, kr.getPassword, we see a reference to session CTF, and we see a reference to flag. I mean, what, what more do you want, right? Um, so let's go over to that script. And let's go here, and the, the script is called automate wow character stat gathering, right? So as you can see right here. Um, by the way, it was really funny when Nash and, and Jam and Yusuf were going through this, and they saw automate drink King Glenn Fittich, and they're like, automate drinking Glenn Fittich. What could that mean? It, it, was, it was just so funny. Anyway, so we're going to, uh, you know, open up the script here, automate wow character gathering. And here we go. Wow script to get my character's achievements for my wow character, Sun Dagger. I really should get back into wow. I say that every year. Um, so we see that it imports requests. It imports keyring, right? So oh, there's, there's key ring right there, right? So that's in the name of the challenge, must be important. And we see that what it is um, doing here, so I'm just gonna, um, obviously you're, you're gonna have to read the script, but what you can see is that it is opening a session to the Blizzard API to get information about this character called Sundra Sundagger uh, from the server Proudmore. And what it's doing is that it's using this thing called key ring. And specifically, it's something called keyring.crypt file. So I assume that most of you will not know what that is. So then we would go over to our browser and we would Google keyring crypt file. Okay. And let's look at the uh, Python um, pip module here. And you would essentially obviously read this. And this is what I meant earlier. Like really make sure to kind of read the documentation, especially for, uh, and make sure to Google a lot especially for higher point challenges. And so you go down here and you can see that basically what a keyring is or what keyring crypt file specifically is. It's a way of storing um, plain text passwords on the host in a file and that file is encrypted. So basically instead of having your file, your password in plain text in a file, what this module will allow you to do is it'll allow you to encrypt that file. And what's happening here is that this script okay, is actually reading the contents of that file using Python, using this keyrings.crypt file um, API, okay? And the line where this happens, so let me go into here this again. Oh, whoops, sorry. I have a, I have a timeout on the, on the challenge, so I got kicked out. Cool, so let's go back in here. And you know, if you go into automate wow character stat gathering, you can see that it is at some point here, where is it? Um, using the API to kr get password 
IS session CTF flag. Now, if you read the documentation properly, you'll find out that IS session CTF is the service. So if you want to think of like your any password manager, like LastPass, right? You have like a, some label to identify the service, and then you provide a user. And the user in this case is named flag. And then what this would get back is it would use some decryption key Right? That's the thing you have to find, the password to all passwords. And then you would get back the WoW client secret. And the WoW client secret would then be used to create this access token and send this get request to the Blizzard API. Uh, and your goal is to essentially, again, find what the password to decrypt the flag is. Right, So, so, so you would expect that here this would return the flag and that you have to find out the password, which is uh, put in using this keyring.setkeyring, right? Um, you would put that in there, uh, and then you would essentially run the script. You it would decrypt the file, and you would get the flag. Um, sorry if that was confusing. You, you, you'll 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 see it in just a second. Okay. Um, so okay, but then maybe you read the documentation a little bit more. And what you see is that, in fact, okay, well, well, we know that there has to be this file that's encrypted on this host. So how how do you find this file? So if you actually re read the documentation, you'll find this reference here. So crypt file underscore pass. By the way, this isn't the documentation. This is just the pip module. But it, honestly, in this, you'll, you'll find everything you need. So let's take this and let's go here and let us actually see if this file exists. Uh, let me use less instead. So you go in here, and lo and behold, it exists. And we see that there is this encrypted password here. And this is likely our flag. I mean, it literally says flag equals to this. But we still haven't found that password. OK, so what do we do now? Um, where could that password be? So one thing you could do, which I will not show because I'm taking very long to do this explanation, is to you know just run like a, again a find command that just looks for like uh, files called creds, files called master password. So maybe the sysadmin here left their password in a you know left the password to all passwords in a, in a plain text file and not in, not in their head. So you can try that. But actually, where the password is is in fact if you go into automation scripts here. And if you, again, list everything here, you'll see that this is, in fact, a Git repository. And I put a little underscore there just to maybe highlight it a little bit more um, so you can see that it's interesting. If you cat the config, you'll see that this refers to this GitHub repository right here. And if I just copy this, right, and I go to my browser and I go here, um, you would see this GitHub repository, and it looks exactly the same as we have what we have on the host. Um, what's interesting, though, is that there are four commits. One thing that one common mistake that um, you know during development devs do is that they will actually commit passwords, um, you know, inside of their source code. So this is something that you know you can crawl the web for and search for. And there's a lot of tools that can help you do that. But in this case, we only have four commits, so we're just going to click on the commits. And we can see here that there's this commit that says first commit, OK? Then it says not ready for prod yet. If I click on this, oh, whoops, not this one, ready for prod. Oh, we can see here that at one point, the developer put in this getenv, so to read the password from a, um, you know, an environment file. And you can check you know, if this environment file is present. Uh, but you can see in an earlier commit that they actually committed the password right here. And the password is just it's Gwenhivar. Um, that's what it is. Okay, So let's copy that and make note of that. So now we have the password to all passwords. What we want to do is we want to actually now decrypt um, the password. So how do we do that? Again, the instructions are all here, right? So now you just use the Python module. So let's just copy a whole bunch of this, right? Um, so again, you would take a lot longer um, to do this normally, but um, just for the sake of a demonstration. So let's open up a Python interpreter here, and let's copy that. Oh. What did I do? 
no module named Kirings dot. Oh, that shouldn't happen. If I remember when we did this, we didn't use that 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 import line. I don't know if you remember that. I don't know if it, that matters. You, you do need the import line. Yeah, you guys did it a bit differently. Um, right. It's completely yeah. Yeah, but uh, it seems there's a problem with the image. Um, okay, so un unfortunately, I'm I'm not going to be able to. Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to to show you um, the decryption process. But I can at least walk you through it right here. Um, so it seems like there's a, I made a little change and I guess it, it uh, broke uh, a pip install. So so basically um, what you can see here is you just, you know, do the right import, you create uh, this keyring, you can, uh, you know, set the keyring uh, dot dash key equal to Gwenhivar, which is the password that we found. You set it here and then there's a, dec there's a couple of decryption instructions here. So you go kr.getPassword um, and it would be, uh, you know, IS session CTF, and here which would be flag exactly like we saw in that script. And then what you would get back there in place of secret is the flag. Okay. So um, I don't know if that's a um, like a hundred point challenge, but you know, there's a lot of stuff to kind of put together. So so I guess it, it would be a higher point challenge. Really dis disappointed that I, I messed up that la last import, but um, hopefully that was clear for everybody. And if it wasn't, it's okay. This is like a very high point challenge. Um, you'll be solving a lot of challenges before this one. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's broken right now, unfortunately. I'm sorry, um, but uh, I will make sure that it is uh, in in top shape for for actual game day. Uh, we should note that these challenges we made for um, today were kind of fairly quickly put together. Whereas all the previous challenges were actually tested by us and um, like confirmed working well. So hopefully we don't run into issues like this um, too often. Yeah. Um, so uh, does everyone hopefully feel comfortable going into IS session CTF on uh, Saturday and Sunday next week? No, that's okay. CTFs are supposed to be hard. Um, yeah, yeah, spooky, sure. Um, they're, uh, C CTFs are, are meant to, again, be very practical, but once you solve a challenge and you sort of like know the different techniques, uh, you know, uh, related relating to that challenge, you very quickly get into this pattern um, where you are trying all those different things very, very quickly, okay? Uh, and eventually it becomes easier and easier and easier to solve challenges and you know like, okay, when I get on a box, these are the first five things I need to do. When I'm reading some code, this, you know, I need to look at the imports. I need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, look at certain critical functions, right? So um, just make sure uh, that you show up and you keep trying and you keep practicing and you will get better at this. All righty, cool. So it looks like <laughs> some people are crying and some people are celebrating. That's that's okay. That's good. That's, that's what we expected, I think. <laughs> um, Luai, just correct me if I'm wrong, yep. but any challenges that, that, that anyone solved right now um, would it actually go towards their score on the real day of the CTF. Is that correct? No. So uh, the... So all, all those challenges will appear. So, hey, if you showed up today, three points, that's good, right? Um, but, uh, um, sorry, lost my train of thought. So, but, uh, but yes, so all the submissions will be deleted. So you're going to have to redo those challenges for sure. Yes, you are going to get robbed. <laughs> We're going to delete all your submissions. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions before we wrap it up for the night? I know it's been a while. It's been like three hours. Yeah, I'll pull I'm through gonna, though. I'm, I'm going to unmute the voice channel. Nice. 
so uh, prepare yourselves. <laughs> Still has to be Bush to talk, though, I think. If anyone wants to speak their mind, speak away. No society. Um, so, yeah, once again, I see there's a question there. Uh, so, no, you're not going to... Um, so, so you, you're not... You're, you're going to have to redo these challenges in order yeah. to get the points for them. You're not going to get to keep the points. Yeah, you have to use push to talk um, to speak. Um, mm, never mind. I think I can turn it off, but it might. Well, let's see if it blows up. Um, I think there's already a couple people unmuted who oh. don't know they're unmuted. Really happy with the turnout and how everyone, like, for the most part, stayed with it. So it's exciting. So yeah. I have a quick question. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Yeah, so for the, what's it called? The, um, like, you know how you mentioned there's going to be, like, workshops, mm -hmm. right? Are these guys coming in to, like, seek out potential maybe, like, I don't know, co-op or, like, internship? Or they're here to, like, teach us about how their company works? Like, how, like, how, how are the workshops going to run through? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so the workshops in terms of content are uh, to teach you some concept that is related to what that organization does, okay? Um, so they're just meant to be like very introductory workshops um, in case you, know, you wanna learn more about that sort of specific segment of the industry. Um, in terms of uh, are they hiring? That's something that you can definitely ask them. So we haven't asked them that question. But what we are going to do is we have basically like a, uh, an area in the Discord where we're going to have like a category for each sponsor. And some sponsors are actually going to have like an HR rep in those categories. And what you can do is you can jump in there and you can talk with the HR rep, ask questions, ask them, hey, uh, are, you, you know, are you hiring for co-op this summer? Um, what kind of jobs are available? Um, what are you, you know, what what do I need to do to succeed um, in getting a job at your organization? What do you do on a daily basis? Um, that sort of thing. So hope, hopefully that answers your question. Yes, no, maybe so? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, cool. Any any other questions? Uh, okay, is is there a kind of cybersecurity game night where we basically play cybersecurity games such as Zero Threat and give each other tips and tricks and would they actually be beneficial? Um, so I guess our version of cybersecurity game night is the CTF. So you should definitely come to the CTF. Just so you know, Loi, you're looking at the club uh, ideas channel, not the stream. Oh, am I? This channel. Yes. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have uh, recommended websites to learn slash practice CTF on our own time? I would highly recommend doing Pico right now. Yeah, that's that's probably the best uh, uh, practice. Again, before Pico CTF and, and all the actual traditional CTF sites, I cannot stress the, the value of doing at least the bandits um, series of war games on on over the wire if, if you don't have like the basic Linux navigation or sysadmin skills down um, at least for RCTF you know it'll be unnecessarily more difficult than it actually has to be um, yeah I think uh, spending three four hours over the next week and a half on on bandit will serve you very well a long way Absolutely. Over the wire, yeah, that's a that's a great uh, site. That, that is where Bandit is, right? Bandit is not on Ring Zero. I did it a long time ago, and I have no idea where it lives. Yeah, it's on Over the Wire. Over the Wire. Ring okay, cool. Good. Ring Zero is really good. It's just it's like out of all the sites that we've listed so far, it's by far the most challenging. It has some brutal, brutal challenges. Um, yeah. Try Hackmate. Great, great uh, suggestion there, Nash. I think. Um, 
try hack me the free tier is, is even um, enough to get your feet wet it has a lot to offer so definitely recommend that okay um cool so thank you so much everyone i see there are no more questions um thank you so much for for joining sorry, us sorry, tonight. sorry 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 i just got a super duper question that we forgot to mention um okay that, so some people made teams just for today's ctf um mm -hmm. and they're wondering if they can change their teams afterwards um absolutely i think we talked about that um as a team and we all decided that yeah you'll be able to uh change your teams um after tonight is that correct kurt why correct me if i'm wrong uh yeah i, be I believe so um i don't think there should be any any problem with that you can change your teams up until the because because we're resetting the points you should be able to change your teams up until yeah the the day of when you complete your first challenge uh, the ctf i believe cool uh anything anything else from anybody yusuf nash jamie kurt jam good man see we covered everything i think it's late agreed okay thank you so much everyone uh leave your best gif uh to say bye and uh we will see you uh march 27th and 28th for is session ctf uh 2021 thank you so much everyone have a great night beautiful thank you everyone Take care, everyone have a good have night a good, thanks good for night. coming out <laughs>